All right. Welcome, connoisseurs of fine common cardboard, to today's Let's Build live stream. I've got my good friend Derek here, a regular that we're so lucky to have on the channel. How you doing, buddy? I am doing great. How are you doing, Ryan? Excellent. Very well, thank you. And awesome. uh, if our audio is coming through loud and clear here, uh, I'd love, love everybody to just uh, give us a little thumbs up in the chat. Let us know that everything's coming through. And um, and yeah, we're just really stoked to be uh, coming in with uh, Trellisara Moon Dancer today. And uh, for those of you that have been tracking our Let's Build series, uh, Derek has taken us on a really interesting journey into um, a topic that we talk about a lot, which is broadening our definition of, of uh, ways that we might advantage ourselves. Um, so traditionally, we call it card advantage, um, but we're exploring resource advantage, which is the idea that instead of drawing lots of cards, we only draw yeah. cards that we like. And uh, we've been able to see this with um, Dragon's Rage Channeler was a great example of that. Uh, and right after we did D DRC, I lost to DRC and was very impressed with the deck. And uh, essentially, um, shortly after that, Derek, you reached out and said, really, this Trellisar of Moondancer is kind of the same thing for two mana, but we have some yeah. insulative synergy that's both like making us harder to kill, but also like you can get a lot of triggers off life gain, uh, maybe mm -hmm. more so than casting spells. So uh, yeah. this was immediately kind of on our radar for another one to do. And I do want to mention as well that another commander that's going to be worth looking at as well is going to be um, is going to be 10th district legionnaire uh, for those of you unfamiliar with it uh, 10th district legionnaire is a um, uh, is a boros commander that uh, basically has the same ability it's just heroic they get a plus one plus one counter and you scry one uh, it's two mana um, so something else that we're going to be eager to uh, to take a look at so um, yeah. so yeah, with, with that, I just want to start with a quick thank you to every one of the people that makes this, uh, this series possible. And this is our patrons. So I want to give a quick shout out. Thank you to Zach, Scooby, Chris, Tristan, William, Paul, Corey, Derek, Devin, Ian, Bobby, Gin Shooting Star, and our longest running patron, Noyark. Thank you all for your contributions. If you too are interested in joining our Patreon and supporting this continued content, this is a great way to do it. We have here um, a bunch of different levels where you can support us all the way from this uh, very inexpensive $2 a month where you get exclusive access to the Discord all the way up to some of our more Whaley tiers that give you uh, private coaching, things of that nature. We also have this aficionado tier for those of you who want the interfaces that I use that I custom make myself. Um, which is a great value. So um, yeah, Derek is a patron and we've got patrons in chat. So if that's something that's interesting to you, let us know and uh, we'll be happy to get you plugged in. But without yep. further ado, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about this. So Derek, you already play this deck, but mm -hmm. a common theme that we're running into is you have a deck that you play in casual um, and you take your deck building seriously. And so this is where we find ourselves at a cool like meeting of minds uh, where yeah. it's like taking these commanders and figuring out if they have potential in CPDH or in competitive popper commander. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we're taking a base deck that you've worked on and then we're looking at how to adjust it so that it's going to fit inside of a competitive context. So yeah, when you look at this, um, what are some of the foundational cards that might be run in both decks versus the sort of cards that uh, might fluctuate in and out depending on whether we're playing casual or competitive? Sure. So, um, like with a di with a card like this, um, you know, Trollosaur is whenever you gain life, you she or rather she gets a counter and you scry one. So, um, the idea is to maximize like individual uh, life gain triggers, not actually like gaining lots of life at one time. Mm. Um, and in Popper Commander, a really great way to do that is with like Soul Warden and all of those cards that do that. Right. Whenever a creature enters, you gain a life. Soul Warden, Soul's Attendant, and those might be the only two that are like universal. The other ones are just like whenever a creature enters under your control, uh, you gain a life. But Soul Warden and Soul's Attendant apply to the board. So um, that's a really great way in a battlefield focused format like Popper Commander to get a bajillion triggers. Um, I played a game with this deck, with this commander recently, and I had a turn one. Soul Warden turned to Trellisara, and by the time it circled its way back to me, she was like a 4 4. <laughs> And then um, 
she just got up to the point where I was attacking me for like 20 damage. And I had a dusk shell, a dusk shell crawler, which is a creature that gives creatures the one one counters trample. So oh it was very, 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 very threatening. Yeah. Um, and the only the only way that I didn't, the only reason I didn't just like immediately went on the spot was somebody actually, I, I was playing against uh, one player was playing battery bearer and they had the, the goblin bomb, the one mana artifact that sacrificed for seven to destroy something. And right. I didn't have like a colorless protection spell or something like that. So she just died once, but yes. I was able to recast her and build her up to like an eight, eight, nine, nine pretty, pretty quickly. And from there it's all academic. Right. Um, and the great thing about these colors. So the big difference between like this commander and dragon trace channel is you have so much more protection available to you. Um, and she really just like grows on her own. You don't have to work at all to like get her large. Yeah, um, that's right. So it's all very free and it's very hard to interact with uh, because when you're gaining so many so, so many individual points of life and you have access to so many consecutive scry triggers, you can really just put whatever's on the top of your deck. You can just have that be whatever you want, right? Yeah, right. Um, yeah, that's and cute. especially if you're playing like a density of protection spells, it's not inconceivable to have access to one pretty much whenever you want. Right, um, right. Oh yeah. my god, we even got the uh, Social Climber. Is there's so many too. of these cards. There's yeah. a ton of them. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah. there's, this is, um, this is, this is, there's a lot going on here that I like from a competitive mm -hmm. standpoint, from a game theory standpoint. One, yeah. our commander is very cheap. The ability and the value that we get out of it is, is enormously repeatable, but it's also fairly free. We don't happen to spend anything. Right to access this activated this this triggered ability we just get to do things so um yep. the other thing is that it, it's building up uh our commander um and allowing us to get aggressive uh while also having a bot a, a, a command zone that incentivizes us to play a lot of creatures i really like creature yep. heavy decks i think we've talked about this quite a bit the ability to leverage these as a resource either for attacking or blocking is absolutely mm -hmm. enormous but it, it actually puts us into a place where we're gaining so much life that we're really only needing to worry about like a dargo or a yeah. spell spear only or commander damage only commander damage and that's such a the good game, place to be the game that i was referring to where i had her that large and i was just able to crash in just with with impunity i was regularly at you know 50 plus life because in wow. the list that i have i have like auras like uh, spirit link life link armadillo cloak those sorts of things yeah so you're just gaining so you're able to gain so much life off of trellisara attacking but also just a lot of life from other people playing creatures um and i really just didn't need to leave any blockers up it, it didn't matter i was being attacked for maybe like from by like two other players for maybe like four or five on each of their turns and i was gaining it all back with attacking with charles yeah, with an aura on her so that's like it was, it was yeah you don't have to worry about commander damage you're just identifying those threats really yeah yeah so if you so what that means and, and actually another way that that plays really nicely is that if it's only commanders then a lot of times our sorcery speed um less efficient removal is going to be very good we can play auras that mm -hmm. lock things down we can yep. play pacifisms and we can load up on these effects where it's like sorcery speed you know uh but it's like unconditional to just yep. lock things down so that we can continue to attack with impunity that's where cards like realm breakers grasp and planner disruption and yep. uh, things like that are going to be phenomenal so so um, the first thing that we looked at here, and you kind of brought it um, to our attention here, is Essence Warden, Lunark Veteran, Soul Warden, mm -hmm. Souls Attendant, Citra Priest, Social Climber. These are our sisters, right? These are our yeah. Uh, well, we got we got a brother up in here uh, with a Lunark Veteran. Um, that card's actually I like quite a bit. Just yeah. I mean I I love creatures that um, are multifaceted, and and yeah. just being able to cast it from the graveyard, I really like. Even though like the trigger on it on its back half isn't like the best thing, it's right. kind of more narrow, but. Just having access to something out the graveyard yeah, is, yeah. is awesome. Okay, so these are some of our repeat life gain effects. What other repeat mm -hmm. life gain effects can we get that um, that allow us um, to like something like Pristine Talisman perhaps is one? Yep, um, so there's a couple more creatures that I'd probably recommend. Yeah. One is Jotty Offshoot. Okay, yep, and that's uh, the it's one It's a one mana gains. zero three that you gain a life whenever you play a land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's It's a, a landfall ability. Uh, there's another one that's, yeah, there's another one that's three mana oh. called raising glade heart i think yeah that's a good one yeah um they gained two life on the lane entering the battlefield yeah this is great um and then uh we've got the grazing this should probably bring it up yep the glade heart yep, that's the one yeah um and then probably the most narrow one but you can still get points from it is a leonin elder it triggers off artifacts entering interesting which okay. you can do so you can you can build into that in a couple ways you can kind of lean into it with like artifact lands um, there's a lot of treasures in the format, uh, a lot of incidental 
um, uh, ways that it triggers. Um, Leonin Elder is the card. Oh, it's not O Leonin. It's uh, yeah, Leonin <laughs> Elder. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, Got one it. mana, one one. Yeah, cool. and and that one's a uh, symmetrical, so that, that applies to the, the board, oh, not just you. You know, I gotta say that yeah. makes it a lot more playable. Um, yep. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And we've yeah. got a bunch of people in chat. Welcome, everybody who's joining in. We've got Anthony Kinese says, my buddy's wife, jam her. Yeah. She's nasty. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of promise here. Um, Nectar Pot. Oh, okay. And then Brokers yeah, Nectar Pot. That's the other one. The search land. Oh, yeah, both the search lands. Um, yep. So Nectar. Uh, Nectar. Okay, yeah, look at that. Nice. And this one can even attack here. Um, yeah. The only, the only thing with, with um, the search or like the Brokers Hideout, like those lands is, uh, personally, I don't, really like these cards a lot just because I don't like my lands entering tapped if I can't. I mean, I, I like to play on curve. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think this is a deck that loves to play on curve. Yeah, so we're looking at probably like a max of like... I would want to like minimize the amount of lands that enter tapped. Yeah, if I they're want gonna, to minimize it. If they're going to... the One of the things that's nice about the lands is that we have priority to play them. And so this yep. is an immediate trigger we can get on Trellisara. Um, and uh, yeah. and that's, that's pretty nice. Um, and as far as tapped lands go, also it's worth considering... That one of those slots is already taken up by Path of Ancestry because uh, Chalasara is a cleric, and so are all, most of the enablers uh, right, for her. Right. So yeah. I was also thinking about crop rotation. This is a great crop rotation deck in mm -hmm. part because we actually get um, life gain in two in a couple of different ways. But there's yeah. also finding things like Opal Palace and Study Hall mm -hmm. um, and Path of Ancestry. Yeah, those cards are important. But there's another big one too, which is we've got all these ET, all these life, um, these la these um, land landfall cards, and so we can yep. actually get multiple landfall triggers by crop yep. rotting for one of the gain lands, and we can not only ETB the gain land, but we can flip mm -hmm. it, gain a life off of the off of the, the broker's hideout, and have right. multiple life gain things. And the reason we like it as well is because of Sejuri Step, which is a protection yes. spell with the crop rotation. So mm -hmm. um, Sejuri yeah, Step. Yeah, is a great here. package. Yeah, and then the other one is Gingerbread Cabin. Yep. And uh, this is going to make a food token. Uh, also well, there's also uh, there's the one that makes the plant token, too. Oh, which yeah. Which is probably better better than Gingerbread Cabin in this deck. Yeah. Um, just because uh, you have way more, way more creatures that trigger uh, life gain off creatures entering. Yeah, and it's not always consistent to have um, this kind of an effect. So Cabaret Courtyard yeah. is the other version that would work in the deck. Yeah. Um, I think yep. that what we, what we do here is that um, we probably want to play, if we play any quote unquote tap lands, they're probably gonna be ones that gain life um, just because that's gonna give us more mm -hmm. ways to um, to sculpt. Um, yep. So we're also gonna be pretty creature heavy, don't you think? <laughs> we sure will, okay. yeah. So we're probably looking at Winding Way. Um, um, and... Before we get too far ahead, yeah. Celestial Unicorn is a creature that I probably oh, wanna yeah. throw on here before we forget, yeah, um, just because that's another Chalasaur like effect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Celestial Flare is what we should come back to uh, because if they do have mm -hmm. a Voltron deck that's like really hitting us for, you know, big damage yeah. in the command zone, this is actually like a, a white edict that's really good. Yeah, I like um, that card quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, if we go Exile and we go Function Removal, actually what we can do is we can go Function Removal O mm -hmm. Gain. Sure. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of like Disenchants, I think, that gain you life on the back end. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Um, yeah. There's a couple of white ones. So there's one I think that destroys an artifact or enchantment and, gain, er, and gains oh, full go. life, I think. Yeah, we got um, the... Well, well oh, compulsory rest. Yeah, well, no, the enchanted creature has it. So the, mm -hmm. the creature's controller has to sacrifice yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have. Uh, Gently Repost is okay. Decommission. Um, one that, uh, that I've, I've liked quite a bit is Exile. Um, yeah, that's a cool particular card. Like purpose. Um, Angie Snyder, welcome to the chat. Glad to have you here. Uh, recommends Impassion Orator as another two mana soul sister. And, yeah. and you know, we got to have a. Um, yeah, there's tons of them. Tons of them. <laughs> and we, yeah, yeah. So um, impassioned. And in fact, uh, this is really starting to make me think that the Soul Sisters thing needs a bit of a revision. We got the we got the Soul Cohort here um, yeah. with a passioned Orator. So let's. And say, again, um, like this is a, this is another cleric. Like so. Here's a card that I know Brownie, Finhorn Brownie, friend of friend of the community, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, loves to death is Whipgrass Entangler. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with this one. Gonna... It's uh it's it's a house. Okay, so which one is this called? It's called Whipgrass Entangler. Okay. Uh target cre intelligent turn target creature gains. This creature can't attack or block unless they pay one for each cleric in play. 
Oh, that's kind of yeah. dirty. Um, Isn't it? Yeah, I like that for sure. <laughs> it's like free, right? Like yeah, yeah. We're, we're playing so Why many not? clerics in this deck. Uh huh. And, and, and it'll and, it'll always be at least like a pay two mana. Something can't attack or block unless you pay two, and, and that's good, right? And and really, this actually occupies a a a slot of cards that we're gonna have that are gonna be kind of like removal, but they're gonna be mm -hmm. specifically for commanders. And that card that card is Righteous Aura, and this is very yeah. similar to Righteous Aura in that like this card really ends Voltron. It makes it stop. Yeah. So and this deck gains a ton of life to play with too. Yeah, yeah, it does, and that, and so it's perfect for that. We got Gator. Mm -hmm. What's up, dude? We got uh, what's up, guys? Excited to see the results. Absolutely, yeah, I'm stoked too. <laughs> Pardon me, I've got a little bit of a cough today. I've been uh, struggling with. We got Austin Ray's back. Stormclaw Rager sends his regards. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got uh, Stormclaw Rager is going to be coming up uh, here soon as well. In yeah. fact, there was a little bit of a snafu today where I double booked uh, Derek and uh and one more and chris from one more games mtg but uh chris will be coming down the line here at some point soon so chris has been uh, defeated i have yeah. uh i have defeated him That's it, right. it, just a little inside baseball um without even participating in the group chat that ryan set up to work it out uh chris backed out so i am i am the victor there i have tremendous power <laughs> this is right very powerful. very powerful very powerful um, this is a fun one. Core Celebrant enters, yep. you gain the life, and then for every creature... You're I like gonna... this one because it's a four toughness creature. That's yeah, a, a big reason why I like that card. It's also a cleric. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think that's... We're getting to the end of that list. Yeah, there's not yeah. a ton more, but you know Looks what? About right. That is a real critical... It's a lot. That's a critical mass right there. So let's do... Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do the uh, soul... Hashtag soul cohort. You can... Uh, yeah. Uh, and if somebody comes up with a better name, I do want you to post it in the chat <laughs> so that I can uh, steal it and uh, use exactly. it in this deck. Um, I need that from you. So, uh, yeah, we got all these here. Um, Dawnbringer Cleric, you are not that. No, you are a disenchant. <laughs> yeah, disenchant he is a disenchant. And a creature. Yeah, uh, creatures. We got to make sure we do that here. Creatures. Yep. There we go. Okay, and then we got Souls Attendant, we got Soul Warden, we got Lunark Veteran, Jotty Offshoot, and Essence Warden. And then we've mm -hmm. got some payoffs here. Um, this is a creature. We'll, we'll start with creature. This is a tag. That one might need another one. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember all the creatures that I think are great here. Um, oh, there's two that I know you're a fan of. Uh, yeah. Syndic of Tithes and oh, Basilica Guard. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, you, know my, uh, you know my weak spot here. Extort yeah. is a really, really dumb mechanic. So... <laughs> this is a little limited because you can only use white mana to activate it, so it kind of pinches you sure. in a way, but the payoff is tremendously powerful. Um, any effect that where you know it drains people and then you gain life equal to the life lost rather than like a set amount is very, very good. Yeah. Um, so like these cards are great because every spell you cast, you can, you know, force a Trellisar trigger potentially if you have an extra white mana. Yeah, and and these also one of the things I've realized about these cards is that they act as if they has they have haste in a lot of cases. So yeah. when you play like a Basilicus creature and then you play like an Arcane Signet or you play a Syndicate of Tides and then you play an Essence Warden and you extort yep. it, you're essentially getting like three damage as a mm -hmm. haste, as a haste ability. Um, yeah. And I think that's really strong. So a lot, like, a lot of decks like these, even decks that make infinite mana like these because then they become an onboard win condition. If you make infinite... And again, like... Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, yeah. If you, I mean, if you, if you are able to, you know, generate enough mana, you can just yeah. go wild with these things. Oh, and sure. and th another thing to consider is like, even though our life total is going to be so high, just like even further disincentivizing attackers by having a four toughness defender on the board, mm -hmm. um, is pretty demoralizing for a lot of board based decks. Yeah. So that's a good place to be. Like people don't really, I think, appreciate just how important it is to have high toughness early game creatures sure. in a lot of situations. Yeah. Even creatures that just like enter and they do something piddly, like an omen speaker, right? A one, three enters, you scry to like, but that thing can say it blocks two creatures from two of your opponents. Like that's another form of virtual card advantage because they are expending, they're expending a resource to attack you and it is doing nothing. So yeah. like creatures that repeatedly block are very valuable. And Basilica guards is a great one because it provides repeat value at the longer it stays on the battlefield. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we have a couple of questions in chat. We've got, who is the commander? We've got Trellisar, a moon dancer, um, yeah. who uh, is a two, two for a green and a white. Uh, whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter and scry one. So basically uh, following in the footsteps of DRC and then maybe in the future someday, we'll uh, look into that 10th district legionnaire and see how we like that. Um, we've got uh, Flyjum uh, recommending uh, Hopeful Eidolon. 
And we've got Austin Raisbeck saying, Trellisara ended up being the better commander that gets the plus one, plus one counter when you do something, uh, comparing it to Stormclaw Rager. Well, I think uh, they're, they're, they're certainly a little bit different. Um, I think we're kind of on this kick right now of looking at efficient commanders with this amazing card selection. And, uh, mm -hmm. and Stormclaw Rager does something perhaps a bit more powerful, a which is uh, like... Um, but it costs mana and it's a sorcery yep. speed effect. And this one's um, much more free. That's for free. sure. And it's free in <laughs> colors where we're kind of wanting to flood the board with stuff and not be spending mana yep. ramping, you know, we're just going to like play our things out. Um, so yeah, I think it, it's, a it, you know, there, there's, there's pros and cons to both. It's also Rakdos, which is really different. So, um, yep. Austin also mentions Jotty offshoot seems insane with this commander. Plus the new Capenna lands three trellis sure. tiggers from one land. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also, you know, as we, as we mentioned here, we've got the crop rotation, uh, under our tutors here. And, you yep. know, there's another thing we're going to want to tutor with, and that's Heliod's Pilgrim. Uh, yes. Heliod's Pilgrim. Uh, or a package is really important. Oh, yeah. I think. And, and I'm, I, I, it, it's, there's some of our other aura tutors are a little expensive, but yep. they are creatures at ETB with our, with our, um, with our soul sisters and they do mm -hmm. find things that we like. So I don't know if we want to play totem guide, heart beast, um, and um, the shrine steward they're expensive but they are big it's yeah. a two five we'll throw them under considering oh we got shrine keeper i think is actually shrine steward i always get this one mixed up this is like me uh back shrine in the day. Steward, i think yeah, yeah. I, I used to get mix up um eye blight massacre and uh, eye sure. blights yep. ending um yep. all the time and people knew what i was saying but uh but uh they, i became somewhat known <laughs> for that so um yeah we've got fogs here um and we've got yeah okay great this is also going to go under protection um along with um this right here uh is going to go mm -hmm. under protection um yep like that and then so something else is kind of an interesting thought that i i kind of liked is like when built you're building out your creature base like obviously you start with this core of creatures your slow wardens and whatnot and then you have your extort things you have like the cleric synergy card and the unicorn because that's just another thing that gets counters um but like like low mana value lifelink creatures um that can also attack and feed into trellisara things like healer's hawk um or like sacred cat which comes back for more oh yeah, um, yeah. things cat, that either cat. can can attack to get you another trigger or threaten to get you another trigger when they block and die yeah um yeah. so like low low mana value um like efficient expendable uh life linking creatures i think is a good way to kind of like round out your creature base a little bit um just because you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're not able to trigger to Trellisora, you just want to have ways to just like scry because that's the most that's I mean why we're playing the card essentially you know primarily is to scry because that's the best form of card advantage that we can yeah, generate with this, yeah. with this, with this uh, commander. Absolutely, um, I think yeah. that there's some token makers that we could look at that would um, serve us quite well. Ones that actually make tokens. Yeah, they... and granted, like this is much more of like a casually focused card, but I think like uh, if you scroll up a little bit, um, Daybreak Chaplain is a good example of like a card that I like in this in, in this vein. Um, if you just touch more, uh, there we that's go. the one. It's, it's a it's a two mana one three with lifelink, mm -hmm. so it blocks really well. And it's uh, it comes down for two mana, so it's like a really efficient way to just like get maybe one or two triggers. Um, I'm not sure if it's like a competitively viable card, but it's something that serves as a good model for what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Just like Healer's Hawk. Yep, yep. We also have a Hunted Witness, which is uh, you know multiple triggers. Um, yeah, this is and Hopeful Eidolon. It falls in the spot too. Um, oh, because it can also be an aura. Oh man, this is not the right home for it, but this card is crazy, no. uh, crazy good in the right home. Um, Okay. Kindly so, Ancestor, I kind of like a little bit in that it's a 2 3 lifelinker that comes back as a lifelink aura. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's a form of card advantage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we could consider that one for sure. Uh, we've yep. got the uh, Martyr of Dusk, uh, is interesting too. I like, I, like, I like those cards less because they don't have lifelink on the front half. Yeah, they have to die first and you get a token. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'd, I want them to have, like, be able to lifelink as a function of just like existing on the battlefield, as serving as either a deterrent or some way to proactively. Um, Trigger Trellisora. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We got Gatorbait asking, do you have any thoughts on trying to do the Rebel plan? Children of Corliss being able to use them in a long game, including Samite to help uh, save boards. Um, okay, let's take, take a look at the Rebels here. Um, and so let's see if we can find the really relevant ones. We've got Tap Creature with Tokens mm -hmm. 2 or less. We don't care about that. Children of Corliss is kind of a funny one because really uh, we're not going to be, we're not 
like this is one big burst of life um, and that's not useful for our triggers. And I think that the only kind of damage that we care about is not the kind that we're ever going to heal back, which is commander damage. So um, so I think don't think this actually serves our purpose. Now, Bound in Silence is kind of interesting. This is a tutorable mm -hmm. pacifism. Um, I'm quite interested in that. Um, and these uh, search for a rebel card. So that does indeed work. We also have the Lawbringers, which can uh, remove red and black, red or black creatures from the game, depending on which one you have, and um, that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, these Lightbringer, are Lawbringer, yeah, yeah. These are these are interesting in that they're like an onboard removal spell that is uh, tutorable in mm -hmm. colors that are often going to be trying to shoot for commander damage. So I, I'm open to that. Um, we have uh, pro black here. Uh, which is flying pro black, which is pretty cool. Um, what else do we have here that we care about? None Sam, I healer, particularly... not super hot. Wait, prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to each creature you control this turn. That is actually, oh, that's sacrifice though. No, no, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. We don't, we don't want that. Um, I'm not seeing that these are really um, high value. So I think my question with these cards is more like how many spots are we devoting to this plan? Yeah, yeah. Um, because like... I don't think we need to be allocating so many slots to creatures that we don't aren't equipped to like take too huge advantage of, um, because we can devote things more directly to like sculpting the top of our library a lot more readily. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense, I yeah I, I I think it might be a little too cumbersome for um, like this kind of deck, particularly because I I think it's it's in our interest to kind of like pack as much content into this deck as possible and like kind of keep our curve low. Yeah, for sure. Um, another card that we're going to want to do here is, um, what's it called? Not cut down. Why is it not coming cut? Oh, cut short. Cut short. Yep, cut short. Yeah, we're going to want to play. Yeah. Um, and again, the reason is that when we looked at that tapped creature, creature clause, like this deck is not taking the stance of interrupting people dramatically with like combos and things like that. Um, we're going to be definitely like the hammer. And, um, mm -hmm. and you know, in, in that same vein, our main interest is going to be making sure that we don't die to commander damage. Um, and we will have plentiful removal available to us, but a lot of it's going to say tapped and that's fine because um, we're like the things that are going to kill us in combat, right? That's yep. going to be something they're going to do. So, um, so I, I, I like this here. I um, feel, feel like that's good. Uh, we're also going to want crib swap. Yeah. All the, all the, the bite effects too, uh, are also very good just because Shell Sorry gets huge and can oh, one shot anything. You know what? Yeah. So, this and is like gonna... Ram Through, Ram Through is uh, particularly potent um, just because we're, we're incentivized to build in a lot of ways to give her trample. So, yeah, bite down. Uh, Ram Through is just going to be like a KO. Uh, Ram Through, Master's Rebuke. Master's Rebuke. Yeah. Those are all really good. Um, yeah. And uh, let's see. Tap target creature you control. If you do, deals damage equal to its power to target. Nope, we don't care about that. Um, we got some other questions here. Austin saying, did you mention the Enduring Bond Warden as a possibility for this deck? Drop it backup ability on Telesarit in response to removal. So Bond Warden doesn't have flash, does it? No, it does not. Nope. So yeah. I see what you're looking for there, Austin, but the it doesn't have flash, so we're never going to be yeah. able to do that exactly the way you're thinking. Fly jump um, saying answered prayers might be good. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's another one that I forgot about. That's another soul sister effect. It's an enchantment, not a creature. Yeah, um, you know the funny thing about this one is that um, is that I had this on my list, but I but I got my brain all screwed up thinking like, oh, it's not entering every time when it becomes the angel. This card is just really good though. Um, so yeah. yeah, we definitely want this. This is like an onboard. It's not going to go away. Um, yeah, it's harder to remove like a soul warden effect that that you know turns into a three three flyer. Right. Now, I, I really like these effects here, um, especially Ram Through, uh, because, yep. yeah, Trellisar is, is massive. Um, we could and even if you want to go to a higher density, like you could even do yeah, something like Ambuscade and, 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 and oh. shoot down or whatever the other one is. Yeah. Um, the three mana ones that add power. But, I mean, I don't think they're necessary unless you want to, like, go really heavy into that effect. Yeah, I mean, we could look at finishing move, too. I'm not sure what, um, what stickers we would actually care about having, but we can, um, we can look at that later. Um, yeah, I think I think in terms of like getting a general like sketch of a list down, I wouldn't want to like, go too heavy yeah. into like specific like sideways themes like, yeah. like tickets or anything like that. Right. Or stickers. 
Yeah, um, and, and something I, I mentioned to Derek is today's will be a little bit shorter. So y'all are going to get a b- bit of a brief, short and sweet stream today because I've got some some shenanigans I'm getting up to later on. So we're going to be taking a fast stab at this, knowing that we that Derek's already built a version of the yeah. deck, and uh, and we have this uh, heuristic that we're working off of with uh, our carded our card selection. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony says, uh, got to go, but shared this with my boy PS hit the like people. <laughs> hey, thank you very much, Anthony. I really appreciate that. Yeah, Take care, man. Yeah. When you all get a chance, if you're enjoying the content, and you want to do the free thing to support this stuff, let us know that you're enjoying it and let the YouTube algorithm in particular know that you're enjoying it by hitting a like, leaving yeah. any comment for the algorithm or for us to improve our content in the comment section below. You can always send that to me via DM as well. And if you aren't subscribed already, make sure to do so and hit the bell icon so that you can be uh, informed when we're having live streams particularly for the gameplay where we might not always announce it. Um, and that's uh, mm-hmm. always fun to see you all in there. So Fly Jum saying Dusk Shell Crawler is a good one for the trample. Yeah, yeah we'll absolutely. get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good one. Um, so <laughs> There's a couple more categories of cards we need to look at. Right, you know? but right. But uh, right now we're talking about... Um, uh, he lights Pilgrim, right? Like, get, 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 find, let's find some auras. Yeah, yeah. So we got some, some auras. So we're going to do Benevolent Blessing. Yep, um, there's the protection ones uh, that yep. are certainly... We're going to do Benevolent Bodyguard is not an aura, yeah, but we that do want that. Um, and yep. then we're also looking at Shomano's um, and Shomano's Blessing. Both of these cards, really good because you can put them on your own stuff or your opponents uh, to stop them mm-hmm. from flickering. Of course, in that same vein, we're going to do Stave Off because we can target our opponent's creatures. We're going to do Vines of the Vastwood, um, yep. which is also great for this purpose here. Um, interrupting. Yeah. And you've got all the hits, right? You've got, I, I, I would include the color, the ones that uh, Apostles Blessing and um, yes. the new one that Angelic protects against artifacts and bullets. Yeah. Yep, yep. This one, and I want to talk and take a moment to briefly talk about why this is so important. Uh, in my set review, I highlighted this card as one of the better cards that was printed. And it's mm-hmm. it's like quite surprising that we got it. The only thing we didn't get with this card, and I would never have ex- like expected this, is the ability to target our opponent's creatures. Um, but this thing giving protection from colorless is huge. Um, like Aether Spellbomb is like one of the common ways that combo decks will protect themselves against commander damage or big sources of damage. And getting your creature bounced when it has a ton of counters on it feels bad. Uh, this thing yep. protects from colorless. It also grants a counter, which is huge. So um, yep. very good card, very staple. Um, we're also going to be looking at Apostle's Blessing, which you mentioned. This one is the yep. other. Uh, now there's three cards. There's Razor Barrier is the other one. This one also sure. protects against artifacts. So um, so yeah, we've got a nice little protection suite there. Um, yeah, but it was like, like uh, Tamiya. Oh, oh uh, Gaia's Blessing or Gaia's Gift, whatever the one that's a two-mana spell gives, Hexproof, Trample. Oh, okay. You like you know, this one, huh? Indestructible, a counter. Yeah, I think it's good here. Mm. Giving Because oh, you can trample. use it offensively and defensively. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, the it's, Trample it's, is pretty pretty strong. It's very here. flexible. Yeah. yeah. This it's is, a protection um, spell or, or it just KOs somebody. This is a card that I don't often find room for um, because... I think it, it's quite good. And I know in casual, it's basically staple. Um, but yeah. when, when I'm in green, a lot of times I'm also in white. And so when I'm in white, then I just have sure. protection spells, which are just... You just want to keep it to, to the one mana spells, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You want to keep it to the one. Um, that's not always the case. And I think in this case, we probably will wish that we had just one mana stuff in some cases. But I think the trample and even the reach here is potentially oh, sure, yeah, it's reached too. Yeah, yeah, potentially very good. It just kind of does a lot, especially yeah. because we're piling so much onto our commander. Yep. Um, being able to like use it as an offensive combat trick or reactive protection spell, I think, I, I, as people who have seen me guest on, on the show more than once know, I love modality and like cards that you can use in multiple different situations. I think you get a, it's, it's, it's another form of virtual card advantage. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just have more cards, you, you have you know, virtually more cards in your deck than your opponent because this card is actually two cards, right? Yep. Um, yep. so, yeah. And uh, another card that I wanted to mention here, Crimson Acolyte and Obsidian Acolyte are particularly disgusting cards right now. Um, the uh, ability to repeatedly sink mana into these to gain protection from black or red is often quite game ending. If you are playing against Passageway Seer and you have Obsidian Acolyte, not only are you never taking damage from the Passageway Seer, but your Trellisara is going to kill them whenever they want. Uh, you will not yep. lose the game <laughs> unless somebody uh, gets rid of your Obsidian Acolyte. So Yeah, it, um, hits, it, it hits kind of like this, and, and the Crimson Acolyte hit all the kind of like aggressive boogeymen in the format, right? Yeah, like yeah. It, hits all, it, hit, it hits gut and the gut tokens. <laughs> so um, you can just block those things for days too. Like it, yep. it just does a lot. Yeah, another it's one that I've well been 
really interested in is Ward of Lights. And, you know, we were just talking mm-hmm. about before we started the stream about this card right here, which uh, y'all can't yeah. see. It's called Mystic Veil, and it's uh, Grant Shroud to a creature on an aura. And uh, if you choose to play it as an instant, you have to bury it at end of turn, which is, of course, uh, old card code for sacrifice it at end of turn. And uh, Ward of Lights does the same thing, except it's protection. And um, what I kind of like about these, and I really don't like playing protection spells at sorcery speed. Big not mm-hmm. fan of that. But yeah. sometimes everybody's tapped out. Um, you, can, you can just do it, yeah. And you can just do it. So I, I, I kind of like that. Um, and it's still instant speed, so it's going to read just like stave off. And you can target your opponent's creatures with it as well. Um, yep. So, uh, yeah, like if a person, you know, plays out a, um, a pneumatic wall and you're concerned about them comboing, you just sorcery speed, ward of lights, put it down. They can't do anything about it now. They can't flicker it. It can't be targeted. Yep. Um, so it's pretty pretty cool. And and one of the things you're seeing here is that um, both Derek and I have a heuristic about cards having multiple usage cases. Um, we like modality. Uh, it's important. So um, yeah, Mask of Yeah, Wanderers. there's not a ton of ways to just like draw a bajillion cards in, in this format. So getting the most out of the cards that you do play is a great way to shore that up. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about Guardian of the Guild Pact? This seems like um. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. I, I, know, I mean, I recognize that as a tremendously powerful card, but I don't think we need it. I don't think it, I think it's outside the, of what we want to be doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't want to kind of gum things up with a four mana card. Yeah, I agree. Um, we've got Soulbound. That's kind of interesting. Hadn't thought about any Soulbound type stuff. Um, I'm not sure if there. Well, there's a uh, there's a couple. I think right. Like there, there's the only one. The one that comes to mind because it's in my mind the most powerful is Nightshade Peddler. Just gives death touch. Um, but the other ones, I'm oh, not sure trample. are that great for their price point. Oh, no, no. Plus one, plus one. The Vigilance. trample one costs six mana. Oh, there's trample. They're all very expensive. That's yeah. why I like, like Nightshade Peddler costs two mana, which is why I like yeah. that card a lot. I don't think it's particularly good here, but um, in general, for everybody watching, like Nightshade Peddler is a really good card. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Austin mentions the card Flywheel Racer, um, which is an interesting card. Um, I played yeah. quite a, a bit of pre-release and... Um, I played this card in every pre-release I had, uh, mainly because mana fixing is great, um, but it's also on a body. And it's a weird card in that, like, if you attack mm-hmm. with this and your opponent kills it in combat or blocks it, then it's no longer a mana rock. If your opponent doesn't have a creature, then you get to hit them for three and tap yeah. it to make a mana, which is pretty darn cool. It's also a, a, um, a mana rock that probably doesn't die to sweepers. Um, while also being a creature. So it's kind of like a bit comparable to like um, uh, Guardian Idol, um, except that it makes colored mana and it can be a blocker. Um, so I, I kind of like this card, uh, but I don't know if this is the right context for it. Um, right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, cool card. Um, I also haven't fully grokked exactly where this goes yet. I did just <laughs> realize that with Roll Parasite, it's quite good. Um yeah, and uh, a couple of other commanders as well. I think TPI. I've added it to TPI. That's one thing that I've noticed. Like I, I've been playing, I uh, 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 casually like a more powerful like casual Sky Hussar deck with a lot of like tap on tap kinds of things. Like a lot of creatures that generate value when you tap them, like Samet Herbalist and uh, Sphinx's Disciple, like a lot of this kind of stuff. And, yeah. and those kinds of cards I like quite a bit because if you're not attacking or blocking with these creatures, then you can use them for other things. Um, so yeah, I, I like those effects. Like I love Springleaf Drum and Moon Snare Prototype. Like I think those cards are like incredibly underrated. But not every deck has the creature suite to kind of maximize them. Yeah, you know, and and the funny thing about Moon Snare Prototype is as much as I love modal spells, I've never used the um the side of it that everybody talks about. <laughs> um yeah. and um and that that's felt pretty bad. So I, I am no longer playing that card in <laughs> in, a, in a lot of um yeah in, in a lot of decks uh because it just um you know it, it, it's, it's just a, another spring leaf drum that's really what it is yeah. and, and if you if you find yourself in a situation where you can cast the ch- or channel it for to you know i'm ebb something then great more power yeah. to you but uh, you know i i think it's treating it you know in the deck building process any, as anything other than another spring leaf drum is uh, kind of foolish yeah yeah i agree and i think the spring leaf drum um in this case like like we you're noticing we have a lot of pips here a lot of mm-hmm. pips um so spring leaf drum is actually kind of appealing to me i kind of like it's a decent in terms of like the mana rocks to play yeah, yeah. if we're in, in a deck like this though i i would prefer cards like spring leaf drum 
Hey, what's up? We've got Angie Snyder saying, speaking of rocks, Hierophant's Chalice seems to be, uh, seems like it'd be good. Let's uh, take a look at that. Um, Hiero... Yeah, it, it enters and you gain a life and dra it drains a life or something, I think. Uh, you gain a life, uh, it's, uh, loses a life. ETB drain for a three mana colorless making rock. I think part of the thing here is that we're actually not going to be doing rocks. I think if we do any rock yeah. here, it's going to be elves. Um, but it's an interesting mm -hmm. idea. Higher Fence Chalice, for those of you who don't know, is an interesting card in the context of uh, Abdel decks because it is actually a win condition. If you end up going infinite with Abdel, then you actually just flicker the rock and you drain yeah. everybody out of the game. Uh, we've got Jeff Gangaware. What's up, dude? How you doing? Um, I'm not sure that I've seen you in stream before. Maybe I have, but i um, glad to have you here. Oh man, I'm late. The deck is basically together. Well, you it know, think not. about it. it, it is, <laughs> it's not. Um, so don't worry. We're we're only half the way there. And and really, like if you think about it this way, doing a quick recap, we have the Soul Wardens. Okay. We have protection spells. And uh, and that's really it right now. We have a couple of lands. We have some removal yeah. here. So you really we haven't were... missed you haven't missed really anything at all. This yeah. Is, uh, just we're, the we're talking about auras and like the two I think we were focusing on, focusing on rather like um, the protection auras, but uh, I think that uh, Rancor and uh, Armadillo Cloak are... Oh, yeah, that. we are absolutely... I would need so, to be thrown in. Yeah, so, oh, Rancor. Um, Anthony said I should check it out. Oh, you're Anthony's friend. Wonderful. Well, uh, thank you, Anthony, <laughs> for one thing, for for bringing more people to uh, to the channel yeah. and to the format. That's uh, something I love to see. I know you do too, Derek. It's... Uh, Always a, a good feeling to see, um, and yeah. I'm glad this glad to have you here, Jeff. So hope you're enjoying it. Armadillo, um, armadillo cloak, and yeah. So what are busted. what other auras do we want? Um, so I like. I mean, I I've been playing in in my admittedly not competitive list with like Life Link and Soul Link, or Spirit Link rather. Um, the two one mana auras. Uh, armadillo cloak specifically is a really interesting card because. The life gain on it is a triggered ability. It's yes. not lifelink. So you can double it. up. Yeah, so if you give the creature lifelink and then have it with this other templating, you gain life from lifelink and then the triggers on the stack to gain the rest right. of the life. So that's right. why like spirit link is a good aura to have because it has that same templating as armadillo cloak on a one mana yeah. aura. The question is like, do we need more life gain? And the answer I think I'm getting in my in my intuition here is no. Um, yeah, most so likely it's, not. It's, it's interesting like in the sense that yes, it's good. And it's probably synergistic with what we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's probably life gain. Like, and, and this was like made something I was made aware of just, just recently when I was playing uh, Thrill Parasite. I had like a, another control deck at the table, Gormod. And, um, yep. and the, uh, the other ones were Dargo and uh, Kenra Spellspear. And for those of you who haven't seen that video, you should go check out Islane's channel. It's called The Possibility Storm. He just today released a edited footage of our gameplay. And one thing you'll notice is that Thrall Parasite's life, life gain, the, the, the extort, didn't matter at all. Now, that's, I think, uncommon because combat damage is like yeah. the dominant way that people <laughs> win and lose in Popper Commander. But it was very interesting to see like, in some cases, your life gain doesn't matter because your opponent's commanders are going to kill you with commander damage. So, um, so yeah, I uh, just wanted to mention that. Uh, what about Bequeathal? This is kind of cool. I kind of like this. Um, it's like, we're, uh, we're not going to have like w reliable ways to trigger it, though. It's just going to like, happen die, when it happens. Though. Our stuff is like... Yeah, I, I, you know... Like a sweeper or something that would just like give us some, some uh, money back for our trouble. Um, it's kind of an interesting, but, but idea. again, like we don't need to, we, all we need is like a couple ways to like draw a card at instant speed to clear the top of our deck because we're going to be scrying so much. Like we're going to oftentimes be keeping whatever's on top. So, um, it, we don't need to just like sit around and wait for something to die to draw cards. We should yeah. just like have a couple on demand, really quick, easy ways to do it. Mm. And I've got a couple suggestions. We'll get to that point, but let's finish what we're yeah, doing yeah. here. Yes. Yeah, so, um, uh, auras, we, we, yeah. some of the, auras I don't think there's, I don't think there's much to like could really consider i i uh something our flying, good friend maybe? um yeah my good friend jeff gangleware i mentioned Sahin umbra which is interesting uh, as a protection spell but um you know we want to be running uh, like instant speed protection spells rather than like protect like auras that protect our commander yes um outside of the ones that have flash right yep, we just yep. want to be able to react um and so like hyena umbra is a great like proactive spell but i think we're more incentivized to use more reactive things to protect our creatures than yeah. something like this. Trellis Sorrow is also going like, to get massive. And, we're, not um, like an, we're not like an Aura's deck. I, you know, it's important yeah. not to get 
like sidetracked by that. Like we were playing a Helots program package, but we're not like an aura right, deck. So right. like we're not we're not looking to assemble like a density of like these sorts of effects. Yeah. We just want like the ones that that provide that core functionality of either protecting our commander or providing like trample, life gain, whatever. Right, right. And I think there's gonna be yeah, it's 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 incidental, is what you're saying. Yeah. Um right. now um so yeah, something like hyena remember probably not what we're I think it's not what we're doing here. Um, but it is a. It, oh, do we have like like Lauren's escape, Tamio's safekeeping, like those cards? Um, Blacksmith skill. We we do not. Let's get a good count of our protection though first. Here, because protection spells are things that we're going to want a lot of. Yeah. Um, Armadillo cloak. This is going to be. Uh, um, what's it called? Modified uh, modifications. Yeah. Sure. Um, and then we've got Rancor. Um, Benevolent Blessing and Chomano seem like a slam dunk. Yep, what's up, Findhorn? Yep. Good to see you. Also, Interaction, correct. We have those in here. Good. Well, good I, um, I, like Light, I like Light of Hope a lot. It's like a really cute card. Um, it might not be, it might not, like, make the cut, but it's, like, it's a good example of, like, the kind of cards that you can really, like, modify a deck or, or like, customize a deck like this to really fit any kind of a meta game. You're, you're doing, like, a very powerful thing, but the enablers that you use can shift to kind of adapt to any specific kind of play group or play style. Mm -hmm. I think Light of Hope is a really interesting card um, in that it does a lot of different things that you want to be doing. It just might not be a fit for this particular list. Yeah. Yep, in in like 70% of other like Trellisar lists, I think it would be great, but maybe not in this one. Let's do uh, 30 planes real quick. Um, mm -hmm. Just to get this uh, in here, 35 lands, uh, 34 lands, probably 34 lands, and then some, uh, some mm -hmm. dorks. Uh, do we want to move on to having any sort of um, mana acceleration? Um, well, before we do that, let's just get the trample stuff out of the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we have Ranker and Armadillo Cloak, which are obviously like great cards. Um, but Dutch, Dusk Shell Crawler is one that was mentioned earlier, oh, um, which is a card that I. As well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, Dusk Shell Crawler and, car and those kinds of cards, the ones that have the, the text, you know, creatures oh. with 1 1 counters have trample. Yeah, so it's uh um there's a handful. Uh plus one, uh we'll do O because there's more than one. Um yeah. and I want to find them all at the same time. Uh fully grown I also think is interesting because it puts a trample counter on the creature. Yeah. Um so it's, oh. it's like it's not it's a permanent modification, it's not an aura. Yeah, we also have crown Saratok, which is kind of see cool. that one. It yeah, it's it costs it costs four mana, which is why I don't quite like it so yeah, much. Dust might... Show Crawler is like ideal to me because it's a two mana zero three that will oftentimes just come in as a one four because you don't need to put its counter on anything else. You can just put the counter on itself. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Gnarled yeah. Colony is another great mm -hmm. example. Uh, Pride Mulligan yeah. is another one. Um, yeah, the cheaper the better. Uh, Tuscard oh, Captain is probably of like yeah. the three mana plus ones. Tuscard is the best because it right. can make itself bigger over time. This is not make the cut. I think you're totally right. I didn't realize that we had this Tuscard Captain, but this is a sufficient mm -hmm. density of evasion on bodies yeah. that we're going to get multiple triggers. We're going to give Trellisara uh, that. Now, one thing I'm a little concerned, not concerned about actually, I, I'm not concerned so much, but I am interested in finding ways that we have a reasonable game plan outside of Trellisara. Um, and mm -hmm. so I, you'll notice I did include Battle Screech. Um, I'm, sure. I was just like a, an insane card. Um, yep. And I'm interested in general in ways that we can take our, uh, like produce flying bodies that can just chip in for damage. And so the other one I was looking at was Triplicate Spirits. Yep, I love that card. Um, Big fan. And I think that this card is going to be great because we're going to have these these cyst these uh, cohort effects, these life gain ETBs. Also, um, they're not going to be attacking. That I have, so. in, in this similar vein, a card I've been tremendously impressed by in every deck that I've played it is Charge of the Mites. Oh, Charge of the Mites is, is nuts. Yeah, the yeah. card's wild. Yeah, this card is um, one of the better white cards printed in a long time. Um, and uh, we're going to drop yeah. these in Evasion, by the way, because um, that's kind of what they do. Um, they grant yep. Evasion to our team. Um, but, oh, whoa, whoa, what are we doing here? Huh. And, and something to keep in mind is that, like, it's really important to centralize a lot of these effects on our creatures because the deck is already so centrally focused on protecting Trellisara. So it's very easy to just, like, use the suite of spells that we have to protect her to protect our other creatures yeah, yeah. as necessary to preserve those effects. That's another reason why, like, Hyena Umbra is not a great fit here yeah. because it's an aura, not a creature. Um, since we're already well so well set up to interact with our own creatures and protect them, um, piling on as much into our creature base as possible, I think, is a better route to go just to make sure that we're getting the maximum use out of our spells. Yeah, yeah. 
And you know what's funny is that we're seeing ourselves here like approaching what actually looks like kind of a complete deck. Um, and like if you were to say take these next like five slots, pick, make them removal, or maybe maybe get it up to twelve. So yeah, five five well, five. So what I probably want to do is find an aura, or, find some removal auras. Um, yeah, yeah, we want. Um, so that's one thing we're asking for a package, right? We have like protection auras, we have damage auras, we want like some kind of a removal aura. So well, like the two, the recent ones are good, but um, uh, temporal or something like like Nify is actually looking really good here. Um, yeah, I think these cards are generally underrated. Uh, the ones flash. that just like have the template that they prevent damage that are that is dealt by a creature yeah. because that also involves you can play it on like a Kessig Flame Breather, for example. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Now this doesn't uh, do anything against combo, but frankly, when I'm playing this deck, I do see it as my responsibility to be like aggressing mm -hmm. on the combo player and the gambit is that as i'm doing so i'm building up a board and no and people aren't interacting with me as much because i'm not harming them and then the gambit is that i'm able to take that advantage and push it over the top to win the game against everyone else um and so a card like temporal isolation here is going to be excellent against a dargo um mm -hmm. but it's um like how good is the flash like is this something we like i get a i mean i'm sure it comes up um, but yeah, like Planner Disruption, Realm Breakers Grasp, like Austin I recommended. I think those cards are great. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah I, I think, um, now one of the things that I like about these two is that you can put these on a, a cranial plating, mm -hmm. uh, or a or spell suit yeah. or a whisper silk cloak or, you know, these are all common spells that we're going to see. Um, I love how I get to say these are common spells on a channel yeah. dedicated to commons. <laughs> I just want to point that out. It comes up more than y'all would think. Um, but, uh, Th that this basically it's not going to stop the equipment from working while it's on that creature but once it dies then it will no longer be able to equip so it has that flexibility to hit those things um and uh it also stops a ashnod's altar which is not a very common card yeah. oh you know what this does hit wow okay this is actually a really good one this hits urn of godfire it hits sure. um, energy. Uh, all refractor. those things that, too, that 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 funnel that funnel your mana, yeah. Uh huh. And those are combo cards. Um, and so you could also hit an artifact land if oh. you want to be that guy. Oh God, yeah, you <laughs> you, you can do that. Yeah, uh, please don't build a deck around land destruction, chat. Um, <laughs> this is not a viable strategy. Um, it's not. No, land destruction in your deck is a very reasonable thing to do. But um, yeah, I think I think having at least one slide or one or two devoted to like uh, removal spells that we can tutor up with the with the Helios Pilgrim. Yeah, fine. that's really the big thing. Um, I like the temporal isolation as well. These are these are all gonna kill things. Like um, yeah, it's have... a good baseline. Like it's a, it's a good it's a good place to start like customizing for whatever meta you expect to expect to see. Yeah, right? like Finthorn was it's a pretty out good the spread. Thing we have uh, fourteen yep. clerics and one in the command zone. Yeah, I already I already have Whiffgrass and Tangler, so yep. eat you there, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, what other remo um like one removal spell here to get it up to twelve? Uh, I'm not sure why twelve is the number that's coming up for me, but um, what one way you can look at it is like uh, you can, you can kind of look at these as how many, how many of these am I going to draw over the course of a game, um, based on the number? As many that as I have you need. Deck. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think you underestimate how many triggers you're going to be scrying uh, right. with this kind of a, a yeah. list. We're going to be able to find what we want. Um, yeah. Yep. So I think that like. We're... So with the rest of these slots, I don't know. So assuming we're not like missing anything obvious. Um, I think that much like with Dragon Straits Channeler, because we're not actually drawing the cards, we're just scrying. Yeah. Um, obviously, like the conceit of the deck, uh, and and actually, Flygem mentioned something that you know specifically here that is kind of hits it right on the head. Super low mana curve so far. It looks like it might need a ton of draw. So the conceit of this deck is is that we don't need to play a lot of card draw because we're going to be controlling the top of our deck and drawing only the things that we want to draw. Um, so what we're shooting to do is compensate for the fact they're not drawing a ton of individual cards by increasing the card quality of the things that we do draw. Um, whereas like, you know, yeah, you might have, you have a blue player, they cast deep analysis, right? Then they flash it back. They've drawn four cards. Um, it's only, it only really, really matters if like those cards are impactful in some way. Um, so really like if you draw one impactful card and they draw four lands, it doesn't matter how many cards you're yeah. drawing, right? Like, yeah. Well, you, you, you gain a lot of equity there, uh, and that's what we're trying to exploit with um, this kind of templating on a commander. If, um, if but yes, yeah, but, but since we're not drawing, yeah. yeah. When you draw two, you're likely to draw one land and one non-land. 
And mm -hmm. so the question is, um, you know, maybe you want that land, but maybe you also don't care. And this is a low curve commander and a low curve deck. And just like Dragon's yeah. Rage Channeler, we're fine. Um, and a know. lot of these cards are reactive, so we're not going to be like dumping our hand onto the battlefield. We're going to play a couple. We're going to play some creatures, some lands, and then we're going to have some cards left in reserve to interact. Um, so it's never going to be something where we're just like constantly losing resources because, again, we're going to be drawing cards that we want to draw, um, and that gives us a lot of equity over our opponents, generally mm -hmm. speaking. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it, and and I, I've played Dragon's Rage Channeler, uh, the list that we cooked up, and I know you've played it, and um, like. It doesn't feel like that makes a lot of sense on its face, this whole like concept of you know, gaining equity from increasing the quality of your draws with these cards, but it feels very yeah. powerful when you're and, doing it. And, and I, should, I should point out, too, that this is truly a, a pretty novel um, development space in this format, mm -hmm. and that um, if you haven't done it before, it might be hard to understand how effective it is. It's tough to grok because yeah. it, it, it's, it, it's, it's not evident just how it works unless you're actually playing the deck it feels yeah. it, it, it reads very weak because like why would you risk why would you like take these risks when you can just yep. do like a very safe thing yeah um but this is a way to play something that is very very powerful yeah that lacks a lot of traditional you know card advantage elements but obviously because it lacks those card advantage elements it trades off by being a more powerful individual card absolutely perhaps. and yeah. you can leverage that into shoring up that that you know, perceived deficiency, and it's very easy to do. Yeah, very easy. It plays a lot more powerful than it reads. Um, I encourage anybody to like just just goldfish some hands with the Dragon mm -hmm. Rage Chandler deck yep. that we built a couple weeks ago, and just like really see how much control you have over what you're doing. Yeah, uh, I, it's it's one of those things where um, I'm gonna say uh, just just trust us, but also um, don't like go go play it. Yeah, um, I'm absolutely. gonna post I'm gonna post it here. Like um, the and and I I really like. Derek can tell you I was uh, I was not confident in in the idea of DRC before we actually mm -hmm. went into it, um, and I came out a believer, um, and that's why we are here building this deck. So if you're really interested in that, um, go click the link below. That'll take you to DRC, um, the deck that Derek and I built as, as well together. Yep. And by the way, Derek, I did add you as a um, co-collaborator on this one. So if you accept the notification, right. you'll be able to make changes too. Uh, Fintorn yep. says, uh, excellent point, Derek. Scry and white green is really powerful. Yeah, I mean, like if you think about it, like these yep. are like this effect in context is even more powerful because it's like shoring up the weakness of the color. We don't have good card draw in red, green, and white. Uh, just like yep. not in this format. And so we are shoring that up by by finding another way to maintain card parity and maintain the flow of action, mm -hmm. right? Because really like yep. card advantage is all about having uh, things to do and have answers and have actionable stuff. If you draw a lot of cards and those cards aren't useful to you, did you actually gain very much from drawing the cards? Well, you got lands maybe, you got some ramp, there's yep. other things you're getting, but but it's 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 really amazing to be able to um, to score. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they're technically resource, resources, but not resources that you can leverage. So yeah. you're not you're just not I mean, getting much out of it. Shit, think about this. Like if you if you do something silly, like you do a battle screech and you flash it back with Trellisar in play and like one soul sister. Okay, just like simple thing mm -hmm. like that, you are going to scry four. And well, importantly, me, you're going to scry four, you're going to scry one, one, four one, one, one. Now, yeah. uh, and, and that is different than scry four, um, for sure. Yes. Now, I, I will say, though, that whenever I scry a lot off of study hall because my commander has died a lot, mm -hmm. it sets you up so well. I mean, you put the right card on top. Um, yep. So it, it's really effective. We got. Um, and it really. There's really great room. Oh, I'm sorry. Say what you're going to say, and then I'll make another. Oh point. yeah, yeah. Um, Islane just says uh, missed a little bit, but uh, looking to catch up. Um, yeah, welcome did, back. Did, did you manage to? Yeah, for sure. Uh, did manage to grab the dub in the game. Awesome. Glad you got to pick up another win there. And Fly nice. Jump says, is there any payoff in white or green for scrying? I don't think so. Uh, but um, we can not take really. a look. Um, and I do want to acknowledge too that Austin brought up the card Deepwood Denizen. Um, this yeah. is a very good card. In this pretty deck. good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, so. uh, before I forget, also, um, so when I say that we are not looking for like a lot of card draw effects, uh, that's not to say that we are going to ignore like 
probably one of the most busted cards that we can put in this deck, which is Survival Cash. Oh um, my god, yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> survival Cash is a white divination in the right deck in Viscopa, and in this deck you're going to... And we're scrying off it too. Wow, twice. you're going to scry first off the gain, and then you are going to draw a card, and you're going to do it twice. Wow. Yeah, so this is actually, this is Read the Bones, um, but but like in some ways kind of better. Um yeah, I like yeah. this. Actually, it's a lot yeah, better. It's a lot better. It is. <laughs> what what I what I what I like to do with the rest of our slots, if we're not missing anything obvious, and obviously, you know, we if we come up with things as we go, but um, I I do think we need to have a couple ways to draw cards to draw the top of our deck or reset the top of our deck at instant yeah, speed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, much like with Dragon Rage Channel, that's like an issue, right? Like if you want to, if the card on top of your deck is something you need and you yeah. just want to have access to it, just having a couple ways. That's why like the the implements and the spell bombs are really powerful in that deck because. They come down, you surveil, and then if you want, if you want to draw that card at any point, you then can you just it pop your bomb yep. and pick it up. A little bit um, different in that one though, too, because we're turning yes. on delirium with the artifact, so there is right. that other right. that other element. And a yeah. lot of so the it, it's a different suite of cards for right. like a deck like this. There's, there's a couple that I like. Um, the first is renewed faith for a very specific reason. Um, I don't know if you want to bring that one up. Yeah. It's a cycling card. So this one um, oh. functions in a very specific yeah. way that makes it very powerful. So this one, uh, we're always going to cycle it. We're never going to cast it for three because when we cycle it, what happens is you cycle it, um, you put the cycling ability on the stack, and then a trigger goes on the stack as well. The trigger gains you two life, so you scry, and then you draw your card. Yeah. So yeah. in a pinch, you can just blindly like scry and draw, or you can just pick up the top card of your deck, whatever you want to do. Yeah, you know, this is um, going to make us look at more cycling stuff because I think this is an important part of the deck that... Um, that maybe this is where we're getting our, our ability to pick up cards, right? Like there's a there's a lot of cycling mm -hmm. cards that we can take it. There's also of. another there's another there's also the white implement of it's a one mana artifact. You sac when it when it goes to the graveyard, you draw a card, you can sacrifice it to gain two life. Right. Um, okay. For a white mana. That's another good one that I like. It doesn't work the same way as Renewed Faith because of the way that the triggers stack, but um Ooh, we... it's it's a valuable effect. Yeah, for sure. Um, we actually have a couple of other ones. We've got, uh, by the way, we have yeah, Aria. Grace and Disciple of Law. Yeah. Aria just joined the chat. What's up? How you doing? Welcome. Glad to have you here. Um, we've got the Cycling Lands. I don't think we're going to do that. Um, I don't think there's... Um, oh, that's a one-mana cycler. Uh, yeah. You can lean pretty hard into a cycling theme because uh, that one gains you life when you cycle. Uh, but Ooh. again, it's you need to devote a lot of space to it. Um, Jump to make it worthwhile. Avenger is kind of an interesting card because I do believe that we actually have a fair number of soldiers uh, in here. I don't think we'd have enough to like make it worth it though. Oh, never it's mind. Like a three it's mana humans. cycle. Yeah, it's humans we've... that we have a lot of. Um, it's, yeah. it's not the same thing. So um, we've got uh, untapping our creatures. There aren't many other ones that are that good. I don't. Yeah, I'm think. not seeing it. I mean. Now I, I do want to make a note. Um, we don't have we you know sweepers are different in this format and they tend to be mm -hmm. they tend to scale appropriately. So like fiery cannonade and breath weapon hitting for two still kills a lot of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Something we have in plentiful droves is white and green aura destruction, and this yeah. isn't for this deck. But I just want to make a note that like Gretchen is a very good deck right now. And something Gretchen probably loses to is having all of its enchantments destroyed. And there's a number of these effects uh, that destroy Patricia, all Patricia's enchantments. Patrician Scorn is, is oh, uh, dude, like the heater here. Yeah. Um, we're not going to play it here because we actually want to protect our stuff with that. But it's just something right. I wanted to mention. Ooh, Marshall yeah. and Cry is kind of nice. This is a plus one, um, plus one Vigilance cycling. And we can cast it from the graveyard. So we actually get to cast I think it it's, twice. I think it's too cute. If I'm Interesting. Being I feel like we have a lot of creatures and a lot of times they're not going to be able to attack. And uh, if we have things like our flying tokens, um, buffing them up is nice. Buffing up our sisters for an alpha strike uh, where we can actually block on the crackback is pretty good. I feel like this is a... I don't know if it'll make the cut, but I'm, I'm very interested in this kind of a thing in the deck while also being able to draw a card. Holy smokes, we got a bunch of comments. Uh, Trellisara is nuts. <laughs> I'm surprised more people don't play her. All the Soul Herder yep. stuff plus the Johnny's Pride Mate effects, totally, uh, which we only have oh, one of. There's um, an enchantment that we're forgetting. It's called a Johnny's Presence. A Johnny's Man? No. It's either Manta or Presence. It's a two-man enchantment that gains you a life every upkeep. Ah. That's the one. Oh, scry every upkeep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's really good. You know, it's funny. It's like this card. It's like a two mana do nothing enchantment, but like 
it's really good. You know what this is though? Um, this is actually this is like um, a search for Azkanta a little bit. You know, like you sort just of. have this effect in play. Um, for those of you who don't know, yeah. in, in other formats, it's it's a, it's a land that's surveilling. I think every beginning of the turn. So, um, uh, and Islay, all, important to remember that every point of life that we're scrying from, we're also giving our commander a counter. That's right, exactly. So this yeah. is reading a little bit like Armory of Erois in a, in a way. Um, Islan says, I built her in Standard Arena, which she was still in Standard, but for Historic. Um, but I built an Artisan version of her, which is similar to Popper, but you get Uncommons in the 99. Cool, cool. And Arya said, are you playing the green prototype that gains life equal to the power? Um, nope. No, I don't think so. Um, the main reason no, we're not is... About, we're not about big bursts yeah, of life. It's, it's yeah. about a bunch of, Lots a bunch of, of triggers. individual triggers. Yeah, we're yeah. going to gain a ton of life anyways. We're going to be very hard to kill. Um, so... We've got uh, Islan saying there were some fight spells you gained life, I believe, were common around that same time. We could take a look at that. They're very, I think they're more expensive. I think there's one that's three mana. We, maybe. I think that efficiency on the mana is pretty important, and we already have mm -hmm. a ton of ways to gain life. So, um, so I think that's kind of where I'm thinking there. Islan says sucks. You can't use spinning wheel kick. I'm not familiar with the one. Um, Johnny's mantra. Yep, that's the one, Angie. And Arya saying, are you playing mm -hmm. Armadillo Cloak? We are. Shield of the Oversoul? We aren't. Sigil of the Nyan Gods. We could look into the last two there. So Oversoul is the indestructibility and flying for a great... This is insane yep. in this deck. Holy that's crap. Good. Yeah, we definitely like this card. Uh, yeah. Find there. And then we've got Sigil of Nyan Gods. Plus one, plus one. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean... I feel like you land this and you're gonna try and one shot somebody, right? Yeah, it's like a, it's like an exalted and it's thing. And cycles. it cycles. Oh, yeah. okay. This is a great find. Very good find Pretty there, good. Arya. Yeah. Um, is lane the one I was thinking of is uncommon. Uh, no, yeah, devouring mind. trendles. Uh, if you like a Johnny's mantra, what do you think about Soul Mender? Um, Soul Mender, I think, is one that taps to gain a life. It's a one mana one one taps to gain a life. Uh, so basically, the same thing. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it's a those. cleric, it ETBs. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's similar to Mantra. It, it's obviously worse than all the Soul Man, Sisters. I, and, and I just the wish cards, there but, was uh, a way to, yeah. like, make all these, like, kind of, and I'm going to say it, but, like, kind of shitty creatures, like, useful. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because um, we have, like, a lot of, you know, we have these, like, these Soul Sisters and stuff. Most yeah. of them are not going to attack. Most of these creatures are not attacking creatures. Um, right. <laughs> they're enabling our Trellisara to get massive. They're getting us uh, scry triggers. They're blocking, um, you know, but like Trellisara is what's getting the work done here. Um, we have yep. 33 creatures so far. I can see the argument for um, the Soul Mender. It's basically the same thing. It's just, um, just different. Um, so uh, one yeah. big thing is the trample enablers. Absolutely, we have those. Got a lot um, of those, yeah. Or Arya said, "I'd like to suggest Viridian Longbow. Perhaps some. Why Viridian Longbow? Could you tell us about that? I'm not sure. I understand um, the. Have a lot of creatures there. to attach it to, or yeah, it's not, not um, um. I want to see each creature. I want to see like, are there any other things that give us a big buff to something for each creature we control? Are not a lot in green and, other than pump spells like uh, oh, yeah. Might of the Masses and that That's kind of right. stuff. And uh, Jeff uh, Grazing Gladeheart is in the deck. Good, good, uh, good call there. Um, yep. Works with a lifelink was my thought process. Okay, yeah. So it's a way to get like more pings. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that makes the cut, but I I see where no, you're coming from. No, I don't from think so either. That. Yeah. Um, we've got. Uh, yeah, there's all these things that like affect creatures with counters like Aqua Strand Spider and um, like Sporeback Troll that kind of stuff. Uh, but I don't think we need it. Uh, wow. This is just a like card. a one mana four, four vigilance. Okay. Probably in a lot of cases. Um, in fact, uh, isn't there another one that allows us, it's a three mana four, four, but you have to tap two creatures. I don't know. Yeah. If that's like, uh, Warlord's Vanguard. Yeah. I don't know that's, if that's a, like, it's a, Brothers War card. Yeah. Um, what do we got? Creatures you control, they're enchanted. Plus one, plus one. No. Yeah, it doesn't um, wow me, no. No. Uh, um, like, maybe you could... Yeah, no, I don't think so. Never mind. Uh, until end of turn, target creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control and gains trample. No. Yeah. Um, oh, Claws so of Wire is such a weird card. Like, actually... It's a good one. It, like... 
flyers are everywhere right now. This kills all like most flyers, and it deals damage to players, which is very, very <laughs> yeah. strange. The number of like green sweepers that actually do damage, where like red ones don't. Uh, it's like the the, <laughs> it's a, just a funny uh, thing about them. It also yeah. has cycling, but it's four mana sorcery. So yeah, I think it's a, more than we want to do. Yep. Um, Let's see. We've got another one. Uh, Jeff says, I'm viewing on my phone, so it's a bit tough to read. Sorry if I send things already. No worries, Jeff, at all. Uh, yeah, no worries. Not a problem. I appreciate you being here, despite the small screen. Aria says, I don't know. Also... If it... mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, probably not a great fit for this deck, but I do want to tell everybody how great Conclave Phalanx is, and it's um, a great, great card. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, very underrated. It's, it's easy to cast. Game. It's easy to play. It gains you a lot of life. Like, it's a very, very, like, clean design that fits in a lot of different shells and i yeah. think more people should play it if i'm being honest but yeah maybe uh, not the best fit here yeah absolutely um by the way uh while we're at it here i'm gonna do a i want to share the, the the music i'm listening to right now because i'm really <laughs> really enjoying it um sometimes i like to do this uh, if you all are interested i've got it time stamped to the particular song that i'm enjoying right now so uh, go go start that and uh if, you know i don't know maybe you enjoy a little bit of liquid drum and bass like i do i'm on a kick right now and speaking of which, tonight, oh, tonight's so exciting. This is, like, not magic-related at all, but I'm just, like, really juiced and pumped. Um, I have a lot of friends that make music, and I have a lot of friends that like to host events. And so um, we kind of have, like, a self-contained entertainment crew. And it's, like, you know, very adult partying. Um, you know, like, nobody's getting, like, messed up or anything. Nobody's out of control. But we love to dance, and we love to dance a lot. Uh, and so tonight is uh, a tech house Um uh, it's going to be tech house. It's going to be drum and bass, all this stuff. And a friend of ours has a warehouse and he recently renovated it. And check this out. He did a galaxy epoxy pour on the concrete on the floor. So the whole floor glitters with like uh, galaxy stuff and there's lights in all the corners, LEDs and everything. And it is going to be an awesome night. Wow. So I am just like really pumped. We've got a pre-party. We've got a show at our local uh, place. And then the after party is at the warehouse. So it's nice. Like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Enough of that nonsense. Right. Each uh, creature. Let's keep going here. Yep. Uh, Angie said another enchantment sweeper is the Serene's Heart. Serene Heart is great. Um, and then yeah, Aria says awesome friend group. Yeah. No, I've got I am blessed for sure um congregate nope we don't want that um all creatures you control wait do we have any taunt effects that we could put on trellisara oh, um holy crap. there is maybe oh yeah uh shinen of life's roar uh okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what about uh oh, crusader this is actually kind of cool too like we have a couple of these in green so like um O power so basically um like anything sign is... of the wild uh oh control is this, this is gonna be type creature a yeah, sign of the wild is one i was thinking of too mm -hmm. um sign of the wild because we're gonna have all these creatures and we're not going to be doing they it, i mean these cards kind of suck when people sweep your board because then they they die right uh, i don't I, I don't think that, that they're very good here if i'm being honest yeah. um let's let's put i think that considering... springleaf drum might be worth playing in this deck if i'm being honest though yeah so uh so with springleaf drum why don't we just play um land of war elf type stuff uh sure Although the other thing is that the Springleaf Drum, we can play turn one, just like a Land mm -hmm. Elf, and then we can play Trellisara and hold up a protection spell, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. So we could uh, do Springleaf Drum. Um, I don't think it's necessary, but you know, it's something. It's another way to use creatures. Yeah. Um, or um, or even if you want to utilize creatures, play um, oh, what's the card? Field Surgeon, I think. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Field Surgeon. So the cleric too. Yeah. Pretty sure that's the name of the card. It's yep. a one-one. Yeah, that's oh, the one. Oh, this is really strong. Wow, yep. this is great in this deck. Uh, let's see. So tap. Yeah, throw that in there. Um, oh, untapped. That's usually the language they use. Um, mm -hmm. To see what else we have there. Um, yeah, you have a lot of cards like um, like Mana Dorks, like uh, you know Sentinel Stalwart. This seems really uh, good. Ja Jasper Sentinel. Um, you know, and these cards are great because you have to tap them. You have to like, uh, tap that creature and an untapped creature to generate mana. But it's a mana of any color rather than like a green for land or else you just get kind of pinched sometimes on your colors. Right. And white mana is a lot more important in this deck than green mana. Yeah. What are the, I think and all, they, and, all of these actually, and they have more than one toughness. Yeah. They're, they're good blockers. Too. I like these. There's another one. There's one more Ceruli, um caretaker. I think it's a, it's a one mana zero oh. three defender that does the same thing. Yep. Yep. Oh, we got oh, prismatic some... strands. Yeah. Oof. Do we need this though? So this basically turns off like commander damage twice. Um, really, like, it turns we're... off commander damage. It turns off sweepers. That's actually the biggest reason we want this. Yeah, for sure. No, that that's a good idea. 
Um, we've got the Cerula Caretakers, great too. Ooh. Vangel, that's a nice one. Wow, yeah, we just get to make bodies every turn. Ooh, Ranger's Hawk is also kind of interesting. Um, less impressive. Less impressive. Because we're not doing initiative stuff. Right, but other people are. Um, I don't. Th I, I don't. I don't think we should be spreading ourselves thin in terms of like what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. um, I think having a couple tertiary ways to take advantage of of like a creature that's not going to attack our block is good. Yeah. But I don't want to like be like okay now we're just going to like in the in, in case we get initiative let's play like this suite of cards you know like right you know, right I'm yeah that's worth it. yeah I hear you on that. Um, by the way, I also snuck in your temple is under attack um, as yeah. well as a way to yeah. Uh, sure. yeah. Um, uh, so we we are pretty low on abilities to oh we're actually oh we've got the lands in so we're good there we're pretty low yeah. on ways to draw cards um, so it's not going to be the same as DRC where DRC has the ability to like surveil 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 right. oh I found something draw it with something in play right this is like, a little getting, different that's why I got having a handful of cyclers and then like also affects like I said like you know renewed faith or implement of whatever the oh, card's called. This is... I have it in front of me. Hold on. Interesting. You know, I, I realized I put the card Alabaster Host Intercessor in here because I saw the mm -hmm. cycling. And this is the oh, new yeah. ETB, like, commander killer um, that reads <laughs> even better than it actually is. Um, but it's plain cycling. We're not really as concerned about that. And it's pretty expensive. Nope. So I think I'm going to cut that. Um, the Selesnya Evangel seems nuts. I that Yeah, I'm really high on that card, actually. Yeah. Um, um, oh, just flipping through like my deck here, another card, and granted, like, uh, uh are you familiar with unnatural aggression? Yes, it's a four mana or three mana plus one plus it's one. a three mana fight, it's a three mana fight spell. Um, so it, it, it also it's it's devoid, so it's a colorless spell too. Um, but it's a target creature, oh, you fights exile an it. creature, and you exile it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, so it's pretty good, maybe not, maybe not the great creatures here, but uh, just an interesting thought. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. what was I looking for? So I think we're oh, gonna... ephemer oh. ephemeral shields is a good protection spell that we should probably play. Oh, yeah, so this is another card that I keep that I've like long been just like completely sleeping on. This is a free protection spell, um, yep. Yeah, uh, we, we really like effects like that. Um, so I think this one's going to go in there. We are overloaded on protection. So the first place we're going to go to is Ward of Lights. Yep. Um, the next one is potentially going to be... Um, so there's Mask of Long Grace and Shield of Duty and Reason. And these cards... Are um, like, I don't think we need those. I mean, what they do is they're going to protect it for the rest of the game, but they also are sorcery speed. And here's what here's what happens, Okay. Same with Cloud of the Dominus, okay? These cards have enormous upside when they resolve. But you know what they also do? Everybody looks around and they're like, this is the last chance we have to kill this thing. And even if your removal is like premium and you don't have a lot of it, even if there's a combo player, frequently you'll still see people be like, ah, oh, I don't want to have to kill this right now, but I'm going to kill it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use my one removal spell to stop this because what it says is do something now or forever hold your peace. And the problem yeah. with that is that you are initiating it. The difference with Chomano's Blessing and with um, Benevolent Blessing is that you do it in response. Somebody says, oh, your card's a problem. And you say, yes, it is. And I'm protecting it. And it's protected for the rest of the game now. We're taking the cards from them. It's a 1v1. Whereas if we go mask of long grace and they kill it then we get two for one and that's it's yeah. awful so, so we i, I look at it this way with mask of long like with those kinds of cards because like like you said you kind of force people in this position where like they need to kill it because you kind of so chalisar is already very threatening just to say that like right out the gate yeah um and people are already going to be like having their eye on it they're not going to kill it immediately they're going to wait until the last possible moment until it gets out of out of out of control right until it gets too big that they think that it needs to go or whatever the case may be um you're speeding that along like a lot with those because you're putting them in a position where like i may not be able to interact with this anymore so i have to do it now yeah. um whereas with something like like a sorcery speed or uh, or a like armadillo cloak you're be, you're, you're just making trellis are like more threatening yeah by virtue of like the fact that it hits harder and does more damage uh, but it, it's still relegated to just like simply a combat threat, whereas it's not like an unintractable threat. Yeah. Um, so right. people are going to be less, I think, incentivized to destroy your commander in response to an orbital cloak than they would be to something like a mask. Um, so I think that's the position you want to be in if you're going to play like a sorcery speed aura like that. Right. What do you think about angelic gift? Uh, which one's that? Flying draw card. Yep. 
Is there anything else? Because um, I, I was liking the drawing a card and the evasion on it. Because, um, like, but... I think you, I think we're underestimating just how powerful it is that, like, Chalasara is 50% of the time going to be the abyss and the rest of the time going to be trampling over everything else. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, yeah. Um, Something that I think we, we have missed um, is a card that I actually cast when I played this deck in the past, and it was actually quite good, is Weather the Storm. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, you know, another thing is you, you you gain a lot of life and a lot of instances of life. Um, you do. I think when I cast it, it was I think I cast it with a storm kind of three, and it was very good. Oh, Fintorn <laughs> mentions Pentark Ward is probably better than Angelic Gift. That's probably true. Yeah, probably. Um. Yeah, I don't like Pentark Ward. I, so here's one of the things that's different about this deck too, is that we have so much protection that even if we initiate with one of these, we might actually, we're likely to have another one up our sleeve to be able to mm -hmm. stop them from that. So maybe Angelic Gift doesn't make the cut. Um, yeah, and, and, and again, like, I kind of, I mean, this is me like a personal thing, but I kind of have a chip on my shoulder versus like three mana protection. Um, I just like it to be two or less generally. Because we're not. This is a deck that's pretty low to the ground anyway, so like it's pretty hefty to have to commit three mana into doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, we have Ritual of Rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. um, gain four, draw a card, three mana, instant speed. Um, no, that's not good enough. I, good I, enough. I think those are those are cool, but I mean, it's it's cute, but I don't think it's good enough mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it's it's not something where you're going to gain the life and then draw the card. It's not something where you're just going to like draw the card that you scry to the top. Right. You're going to lose. You're going to lose a scry basically. That's why I like like um, renewed faith a lot. Um, and then implement of improvement. I keep mentioning that's a card that's just like cheap enough that um, I like it a lot better than these because you can just pay one mana for it, have it sit right. around until you need it. Now revitalize is the same thing as the cycling card. Um, uh, it is not because oh, you, you gain life draw the card. The spell yeah. resolves at once. It's not uh, something where you separate the triggers. That's why Renewed Faith is, is much more powerful because yeah, you yeah, scry yeah. first and then you draw. Yeah. Um, or you draw and then no. You sh what did I say? Where's the card? So it's you're, you're you gain cycle. life. There's a trigger to gain life and then you draw the card. Rose right, it's two separate triggers. Use, gain the, the, spell life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the spell resolves at once. The spell resolves at once. Yeah, so you you gain the life, draw the card, and then you have a scry trigger on top of that. Um, once state based actions and what other what other draw priority, effects do we, do we need here? Like um, um, because uh, I'm feeling like we're a little light on that. Like we could go down the to only 10 kill spells and the maybe... only three that I the only three like I don't know. So there's survival cash. Uh, so renew the three that I like are renewed faith, implement of improvement, and uh potion of healing which is uh it's two man artifact enters draw sacrifice gain three. Oh, so this is another one that you can sequence like renewed faith it just yeah. costs three mana to do it you so you put the draw trigger on the stack sacrifice to gain three life yeah and then you get your scry and then you draw so oh, it's like you, an expensive you do it all it's an expensive once. way to do it you, you can if you want to do it that way um, if not, you can just play it to draw your card and then just like save that scry and have it in your back pocket. What about, what about this one right here? Blessed wine. It's two minute um, instant gain one. And then you're going to draw at the beginning of your next turn's upkeep. So you actually, um, this is actually very similar. Oh man. There's also Basilica skull bomb. Sort of. I never thought I would say that I would like this <laughs> card, but it actually is, um, there's no life related stuff on it, but we can actually give evasion and a buff to our commander. That's kind of interesting. Um, uh, actually, uh, Golden Egg also does a similar thing here. Uh, Royal Herbalist. What did, but what did you think of the blessing, the blessed wine? Is this like it's cute? I, so the reason why I like I, I like to play with effects that will draw your card is because you can do it and get the card when you want the card. This gets it at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. So you're much more limited. And the whole reason of having access to, of having like these effects is to immediately have access to those cards. So that kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. Um, in terms of like sequencing the effects, it's preferable. But again, like we want the card now. That's why we're playing it. And implement of improvement is the opposite of what we want. Um, um, yes, but uh, it is a way to cheaply draw, card draw your card, speed, and, and then you get a scry on the back end. It's not bad. Now, the other thing, though, is we do have just Inspiring Overseer. 
and oh, sure. we have yeah, other and there's good. there's actually a couple of these that we should be playing before all of those um that we're just going to add these for the moment um oh with an oil counter damn oh if this was just five mana three four gain three draw card i would crap my pants <laughs> that would be so good um oh yeah priest of ancient lore is great here etb yeah. you're gonna gain a life and draw a card now it's not going to allow us to do the scry trick but it is a body so when it etbs yep. we should get to scry off of gaining life off of a soul sister right so um, right, yeah. i think that's actually these are going to be a lot better than a lot of the things that we've talked about so far um scale heights is interesting oh scale the heights is interesting it's expensive. It's so but expensive. It's, it does it, it does a lot. Shelter is a card that I actually like as far as protection spells go quite a bit. Oh, I think this card's underplayed a lot too. The um, draw is what we want here, and this is why mm -hmm. we'll probably play that over something else. Because yeah. um yeah. Um gain life equal number of cards in your hand, that's bad. Uh, okay, cool. So I think we've got a pretty good selection now, and I think we're probably in the home stretch here um yeah. so we got oh my god there's so much chat i'm so sorry i wasn't able to keep up with all of this here but we are trying yeah, to cruise to make in. sure that we uh you know that we that we you know uh, finish this up soon so um royal herbalist which one's that it's like an alliances card i think remove the top card of your library from the gain exile <laughs> one wow for two mana <laughs> wait so we can like Double filter for two mana, huh? So if you look at the oracle text, yeah. Excel top card of the library, wow. Yeah, so you pay two and Excel top card of the library as, as part of the cost of the ability to gain a life. Yeah, it's interesting. Wow. I don't, hmm. I mean, the scry should be sufficient, right? This is paying yes, to, it should. I mean, I think we throw this in considering and we come back to yeah. this if we feel like we need more. This is a very cool card, though. I'm it is glad cool. this was pointed out. Um, how many enchantments do we have currently? That's a great question. We currently have uh, like 16. Six or seven? 16. Enchantments? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to drop these in here, these uh, Overseer. Um, they're also going to go into Creature and Creature. There's another one... Um, Oh, no, there's nothing else that gains and draws. We already looked for that. Uh, if you're using tap effects, Samite Herbalist. Um, it's one where it becomes tapped. You scry one, gain a life. I like that card a lot. Um, See it? That's the one. How are we tapping It's like when you it? attack with it. Oh, okay. um, well, attacking is one thing. Um, that's another reason why like the uh, Loam Dryad and Cerulean Caretaker are the ones that tap a creature to get out of mana. Um, they're very powerful with these cards. Uh, and Spring Leaf Drum. Damn, we're not even looking into the cleric synergies here, too. I know. There's like a lot. It, it, it's it's one of those things where you just kind of have to like pick a lane. And yeah, I think 100%. Just um, being like generically like good and not going off the path too far. I think Whipcrack's Tangler is like powerful enough. Battlefield, um, Medic, Battlefield is Medic is the other one that looks good, but I just don't know that we it necessarily only, need it. It just prevents damage to a single creature. Yeah. You know, it's kind of minimal in its impact. It's nice if you play it. No, nah, no, nah, I, I don't think that's going to work. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I think we've got like a good point here. Do we, um, the Ajani's Mantra, is this something we're excited about? Or is this like, I it's feel like not, it's, it's not, just, it's not fancy, but it, it, it does a thing and it does it every turn. I, I, it does it every um, turn, but I feel like we're doing it every turn with like our 12. Like we're going to do mm -hmm. it so many times that I feel like we're going to have to cut that card just for space sure. reasons. Um, yeah, well, it's something where we can always come back to, like if, yeah. if, we, if we need more of it. Yeah. So let's. But do... it's definitely like not not the most powerful one. So then, um, what cards are we gonna lose here? It's starting to look like all of our stuff here is just like really, really good, except for yeah. um, probably these two. Let's I cut, like these. Let's cut but the masks. Yeah, I, I, I'm I don't not, think we need them. No. I don't think we do. I, they're really good. They're very efficient, but they're they're like among the few non-instant speed things that don't do another thing. Shield of the Oversoul is sorcery speed, but it, it's giving mm -hmm. plus two, plus two in flying. So it's, it's an is, offensive card. I don't yeah, consider that a protection. This is a Armadillo Cloak. It's another copy mm -hmm. of that. So uh, yep. Dawnbringer is a must-have. We have Dawnbringer. Um, I like Dawnbringer. Yep. We can um, also put in like Masked Vandal if we want to go that route too. Like so, uh, just an, an extra one, like a high toughness Yeah, blocker. yeah. Well, and, and actually... Um, I, I do generally want to have like two of this kind of effect in, in the and it's, deck. And it's another it's another cleric. So it's another cleric. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Okay, great. So now we have 15 cards to cut. What about Sigil of the Nyan Gods? We have 42 creatures in the deck. That's probably going to go down to 35 by the time we're done. Um, so this is pretty heavy. It does cycle, which I think is one of the reasons we liked it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I think we do want to keep that. Pentarch Ward, I think this is kind of looking a bit like... I don't think we need it, if no. I'm being honest. Like, yeah. I, I, I think the kind of interaction, or rather protection that we want, is not going to be primarily aura-based. Yeah. Um, I mean, Benevolent Blessing and Chomanos are like powerful enough to stand on their own, I think, because they have Flash. Uh, but I, I don't think we want much else in that vein. Temporal Isolation could go, and we could go down to Probably. 10 removal spells. I think that's mm -hmm. good. Um, we don't have Reprobation. Uh, that's true. So do we maybe want to have one Realm Breaker type thing and then a Reprobation? Uh, reprobation also means that we can't attack them unless we have a way to get... Like, yeah. I might say that these might be better because we're going to be we want to be slamming able to a giant them. creature into their yeah. into their or thing, their so they just they just block it and their guy comes oh, back. Oh, so. I forgot. Skycrier is also a source of draw. Uh, it is, mm -hmm. and we also I think have, pretty good. Um, we'll probably ancestor cut kindly can ancestor. Go. Yeah, yeah, probably. It's a little clunky. Um. Seeker of the way we have. Yeah, I can go. Uh, that we have twenty three. Well, let's see. So we have twenty three, twenty six, thirty six non creature spells. I don't think it's gonna be hard to trigger it. Uh, you know, it's just like. What else is it? We're not getting a lot of triggers off of it, so I think you're right. Yeah. Like. What does it do other than attack and block? I guess. Like that's what our commander's for. So. Soul mender. I don't know. Go. Is sacred cat even good enough? I don't Probably even not. Know, yeah, I don't. I don't think that. I think Healer's Hawk is good enough. This but card is very is. good. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're down to 108. Argavian Phalanx is another one that we could look at. Oh, what's the white? Is there a white like Molten Monstrosity card? That's is it. That Phalanx? That's Phalanx. Okay. Yeah. Well, the green one though is the Domain one, right? That's the trash one. Yes. Oh, yeah, they're not so good. Sad. Um, okay. Uh, there's not really any other big chonkers that we're looking at, right? Um, mm, no, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think we like. I understand that you know you want to kind of pivot, be able to pivot into um, like a plan B. But I mean, we have. I don't think we need to. We're we're going to be yeah. presenting. We're going to be asking the questions, right? And yeah. I don't think we want to be asking like a bunch of little questions. We want to be asking one gigantic question. Yeah, exactly. And that's can you stop Trellisara? Um, yeah. Oftentimes the answer is going to be no. Yeah. What? Uh, yeah. That, exactly. Right. Um, uh, so what about these here? Ocean of Healing is the worst. I could see cutting that one. I like. I think the other two play a lot better than they read. Um, yeah, but this. I mean, this one right here is also giving plus three, plus three trample and drawing a card. This is actually like a lot. Both of these are a lot yeah. of the things that we want. Sorry, the other one is. Um, wait, we didn't include the other one, which is uh, these are skull um, bomb. So, oh, whoa, sorry, I make everybody busy there. Basilica bomb. Uh, skull bomb. Yeah, basilica bomb, which is plus two, plus yeah. two, and flying. Um, yeah. These cards, I actually think, are... I mean, they get shit on a lot because they They're are really bad. speed. But, um, <laughs> but in a deck like this, like we, yeah. I, think, I think it's... Th this uh, type of card is good because, again, you can like, clear the top of your deck or like, draw what you place there. Yeah. Um, and then if you want to use it to give your thing a big old buff, you can do that too. It's, like, it's, like, uh, it, it's good and, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so 107... Um... Yep. Uh, Arya says, I would trim some of the trample enablers. They don't do much when you have multiple of them at the same time. Pride, Pride Malkin is the worst. I can, I, I would be fine cutting that one. The two mana ones are pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Dusk Shell is the best. Um, and Tusk Guard actually, um, it, it grows. It can grow itself, um, yeah. So... Pride Malkin is, is by far the worst one. Yeah, we could cut that. I think that's fine. Um, I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, we have the Extort, which seems really good. We're down to 106 here. Um, are we a 34 land deck? I think. Are there any of these so... Soul Wardens that we don't? Nope, we want all of them, every single one. All of these are good. Um, it's the best effect on the deck, yeah. Yeah, the ability to trigger off both lands and other stuff is nuts. So crop rotation isn't great. IMO, it, the best is as... No, crop rotation is a lot better is, than that. Um, it's insane. Yeah, crop rotation <laughs> gets the jury step, which is uh, protection that your opponents um, 
like it, yeah, it's protection from a color. It's also colony garden for a trigger off of our no, um off it does it does all these things at instant speed. It also um, so, gingerbread cabin. It's yep. also like if you have one of these like land cards here, then you actually put like Cabaretti Courtyard into play and you get two triggers and the life gain. So you're getting like a, just a lot of triggers. Um yep. it's it's very good. Um I understand why somebody might think that's the case, but I, I think it's really strong. Um yep. Scott, Alex Scott, dude, is always just like mm. whispering dark, dark thoughts in my head, like cut a land. Yeah, you've convinced I, me, cut a land. Let's no, cut a plane. Are we really, though? Hey, man, I'm used to, my, my favorite decks have 24 lands, so I don't know what you're talking about. She, uh, that's not, not correct for this, though. We don't even have any rocks. That's yeah, fine. We won't cut a land yet. I'll, I'll give you benefit of the doubt. Uh, um, All right, let's see. Oh, the other reason why we're, we're definitely playing, um, uh, crop rotation is Opal Palace and Study oh, Hall. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, and actually, yep. I almost think that Study Hall is better than Opal Palace in this deck uh, because, like, Opal Palace, like, I don't think we're expecting our commander to die. Um, it's funny, like, I, most of the decks that I build now, I find that Study Hall I much prefer to Opal Palace. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, Arya is saying protection is overkill here, and I actually am tending to agree. This is a lot. This is a lot. Um, there's also talk about the, um, extort, which I think is a, I think that's reasonable, um, because it's a kind of expensive extort is expensive. Um, right. Well, it, 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 it's something that comes into play kind of turns four, five, six, when you are casting like one or two mana spells and you can afford to just like pay an extra white. That's true. Um, We're not casting a yeah. lot of spells. So they're, 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 these like basically are soul cohort. That's what they are. That's actually like what these cards are. They're just another way to like extort. Extort loses its 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 luster a little bit when you are casting like multiple spells and you are are losing the ability to you know extort multiple spells because your mana is taxed in that way. Like mm -hmm. if you're trying to maximize your mana, you're casting like maybe two spells a turn, double spelling, and your resources are tight. You can only extort once, not both times. That yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. But like this is a deck that. You're going to be the again like the goal is to draw impactful cards on your draw step, not like draw a mass of cards. Right, right. So, like, you're you're not casting a ton of spells, and you're gonna have mana left over to sink into extort. It is is, yeah. is my perspective on that. So now one it's much thing, more likely. One thing that I'm I am hearing here is the protection um, mm -hmm. from two different people here mentioning the protection, and I kind of tend to agree. And so the the like cutting two of these maybe is kind of what I'm. So thinking. out of out of these cards, I think I I think that there's a tension in terms of whether we want temple is under attack or prismatic strands. I think one of those can go. I am of the opinion <laughs> that your temple is under attack can be cut. I think prismatic strands is much better here. What about Gaia's gift? Yeah, I know we you're actually, cool on it. Yeah, we we, we have it. a lot of evasion already, and this is one of the reasons why we liked it was sure. the evasion. Um, I really like the temple draws us cards, and I know that it's giving our opponent oh, no. cards too. But um, but I um, I think that this deck is going to suffer from fiery cannonade effects um, in a way that we're not going to be happy with. So um, so having like another one of these. Is... Well, sure, but prismatic trans is two of them, right? Because it is flashback. Yeah, and Field Surgeon is also one of them as well. Field Surgeon mm -hmm. kind of sure. um, will do that. Uh, oh, man. Um, Maybe for, like, a stock list, we can we could cut. cut. Are, are there, like, any medicals? that Maybe cut, like, Selesnia Evangel. I mean, I, I'm actually thinking I like these it, extort cards are actually okay. what's coming out. Sure. Yeah, I, go ahead. I, I it's so funny because they're they're obviously good, right? Like nobody's nobody's questioning that. What about the Evangel? You were saying the Evangel? So I can see it staying or leaving. Um I think that it's a really powerful effect, but it's not like primarily playing into what we're doing. It's just kind of like making tokens. If it's in not amazing, with other things. Yeah. In concert with other things, it's powerful, but you know, Mass Vandal By can itself. go too. We could keep just John Burner Cleric. Possibly. I mean, we don't have a lot of interaction for like Artax and Enchantments, do we? We do. Realm Blaker's Grasp and Planner Disruption, oh, sure. um, which they're not disenchants, but they kind of do that a little bit. We don't have sure. o we don't have O Ring in the deck, actually. Um, speaking of which, um, 
or then yeah probably cut mass vandal in instead of dawnbringer cleric yeah um yeah i think we do need oblivion ring just like catch all answers like this it also so, like something creatures. interesting that you that you might look notice if you kind of look at the creatures here or our deck as a whole is that we're very kind of white heavy yeah but yeah, yeah. we have stalwart loam dryad caretaker and oh, just that we want to cast on turn one um we're mostly so, a white deck aren't we yeah i mean if we're gonna i mean the amount of green sources we would need in order to cast those spells reliably on turn one i think uh we're not gonna is have. tough in a deck where we want planes for almost everything else uh, but you know i don't know I think that's a really important point. Um, are there cards that we would bring in instead? Because these are not uh, like core... Spring Leaf Drum. Yeah. Would probably be one. Yeah. Okay. Now we're getting a little lower. You, you, even as like a one of, right? Like you, we don't need a ton of mana rocks, but it's something yeah. that like is good when we have it. Uh, Je Jeff says, I'm done suggesting more value creatures after this one. Lol. Is Suture Priest in the deck? Yes, it is. Um, yeah. And for those of you who don't know, Suture, Suture Priest does a lot more than just yep. uh, Soul Sister. It is also um, a, a hate piece for a flickering. Um, so just uh, good to know. Now we're at 99 cards. Um, mm. So that's pretty cool. So what's something that we just cut that we would want to keep? Um, and there's some other cards in here we never got in, like Bequeathal, um, which you weren't into. There's the Blessed Wine, mm. which... Um, you were you weren't interested in because of the draw no, in the next the, turn, right? The yeah. function of the, the the goal of the draw cards is to get the card now. Yeah, agreed. Um, if we had one, like, more like, slot, like for example, like if you if you scry a protection spell to the top of your library, um, and right? You need it, you can get it. Um, what about Marshall and Cry as our as our final card? It's a vigilance, draw spell, sorcery. vigilance, plus one, plus one. And when we cycle it, we can actually still mm -hmm. cast it from the yard. So this is almost like iconically That's a card that would be good in DRC, right? Like you'd say, oh, this yeah. is great because we can cycle it. We can cast it. Um, I I think this is like, like we have so many creatures that like we're going to, we're 29. Well, it's actually a 29 now. Um This is only yeah, saying me, 18 creatures. Okay. Where are the rest of our creatures? <laughs> do we have, do we put weather the storm in or not? No, we did not. Um, and the reason for that, I think is the same reason that we were talking about with like, I mean, so, so part of my thing with that card is that it's, it's yeah. functionally not doing that much for the right. deck. Um, it is just a big scry, but it's like not, mm -hmm. it's not scrying in the way that's most powerful, which would be to scry, uh, all is one number. Sure. Um, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. So now we're, yeah, 30 creatures, uh, one of which is that um, we actually have another one, which is the answered prayers. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, mm -hmm. this this is like, it's kind of crazy. We're finishing this in an hour and 45 minutes, but this is like, this is there. It's pretty tight, yeah. Right? Like, we have 16 protection spells, which is very deep. We have a big, big bench of creatures here. We have uh, actually, like, a lot more draw than I thought we were going to get to. We have some great fogs yeah. here and an efficient removal package, uh, you know, reasonable number of lands. And then we have this um, this great package of um, of evasion stuff to uh, to make sure that we can crack in yep. with uh, Telesara. So let's take it through a couple of play tests and see how we go. We're going to oh, we change the lands. Uh, pretend like our mana is perfect, um, just for the purpose okay. <laughs> of, of this um, this exercise here. So this is pretty good hand. This is great. Yeah. So oh, that 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 land is awesome. Healer's yeah, hawk on is, one. Wow. Yeah. Hawk on one. Um, I think we we have the mana two. to recast Telesara if we wanted to. Yeah, right so. around. I run think around, let's run get around it going. here. Yeah, I think like this is not commonly something I want to do, but like in this in this particular context, we're gonna we're gonna do it. Uh, yeah, we keep that not on bad, top, yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. Draw. Uh, we're gonna play land. Uh, well, let's see. So social. We could play skull. Uh, maybe just skull place, bomb. We don't have hold we... up protection. Yeah, I think that's good here. And then we attack. We're gonna get a yeah. counter. So we attack for three scry. on turn three, which is not bad. And scry, uh, we don't need a land right now. You know the funny thing is, do we? I, I'm actually like we have two draw effects. I don't know that I hate it. Well, so the thing here I think is that we're gonna have a lot more looks. We're gonna have a lot on more our, at our next combat step. That's right why. now, we don't want to draw that on our next draw step. Yeah, yeah. So maybe um, as we're you know doing our thing here, somebody says, "Ah, mm -hmm. this is like too much right now." We go. Um... 
Well, it'll depend on what it is. If everybody's tapped out, we right. go Chomanos. Um, but if mm -hmm. not, then we go Shelter. Um, so we're going to put that to the graveyard, draw a card. Um, Pretty good. And then, yep, that's a, that's a Nutso card right there. Um, we're going to go... Ooh, that's tough, though. Because like, we don't have a way so to So what we can do is we can attack first and see yes. what's on top of our library. Attack. Um, we're going to Scry. Uh, yeah, we like The land that. is good here. Yeah. So then what we do is we keep that on top, and then... Um, we'd probably sacrifice the skull bomb to draw a card um, before our next draw step to just clear for our next draw step. Um, oh man, it's, I'd love to use this like as a, the trample is the only yeah, thing. Yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be fine. I think. I okay, don't think so. We, we go. Uh, we are on turn four, so we've already played our land. Yeah. So we're holding up Chomano, like we say, like EOT. Yep. EOT. Um, sack this. Draw. draw this, and then yep. three mana. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, cool. And then we draw. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to go land, one, two, And now three, we can play a three drop and hold up protection. Which is probably like social climber. Because yes, then what it's happens definitely social is that climber. then when we play this, the ETBs, it sees it, it's going to you know yep. do it. Uh, let's see. Aria has a couple of different comments here. Um, you know the commander is good when the cuts are t this tight. Um, mm -hmm. It says kindly ancestor is a feel bad. Yep, we got rid of that. Cut temple, prismatic is really versatile um guy's gift is also good yep but we did cut that one i think for good reason um yeah. and then add spirit link we're not going to do spirit link because it's just one trigger and we don't really care about gaining any more life as a dedicated card like that we want cards that are going to interact where we get to scry and then draw a card or yeah. um because we have we have like 12 different creatures that just repeatedly gain life so um yep. and then jeff says yeah they're going to hit the land the landfall is going to be great based on how we're, yeah. we're getting this yeah, those cards so. are very good so we play this out. Um, we're going to attack again. We're going to get another trigger here. Um, yep, it just gets bigger and bigger. This is uh, like Loki nuts, right? Uh, and now, like, answered prayers is quite good. I yeah, think. we keep that on top. And then uh, I think we pass the turn. Somebody's going to get scared. So we're going to we're gonna blessing this thing. Um, yep. And then uh, we'll go to our turn. Um, and at this point, I think the play that I like the most is actually obsidian acolyte depending on the mm -hmm. the pod sure. um then we get two triggers yep we're gonna get a two triggers well or just just one trigger just sorry one. oh yeah two triggers one for one to gain a life and then one to yep. scry to scry yeah. uh that's good it's i think we, yeah. we actually want i think land, land is good here yeah yeah and then uh we're gonna uh, attack um with these we're gonna scry again but we're, we're actually just gonna get another, another we're gonna keep like it that. yep Wow, this is getting big, big. And see, the thing is, this and that together, this is like unkillable right now and probably unblockable. Um, so uh, let's see. Arya yep. says, I guess the Spirit Link is one mana, so the investment is low. You can enchant problematic creatures other players control. Yep, Spirit Link does equal removal. Um, same with um, with Life Link. But what I need you to do, Arya, is let me know what you want to cut at this point because we've got a yep. very tight package here. Um, the idea it's of like actually... I mean, the idea of, of putting... No, no, yeah, because the thing, the thing is, I was just thinking, if it's acting as removal, then that's good. But the thing is, if it's commander damage, it's not helping us. So, um, Ari also says, I feel like the argument you mentioned can be said about armadillo cloak. But the thing is, armadillo cloak is evasion and a pump. Trample is why we play that card. Yep. Um, that's that's. And the it big... just gains you buckets of life at it, once it's not i mean aria is mentioning so, though that that's the same yeah. thing as spirit link um but well, i think the yeah evasion well I, is... I, I think he identified yeah the evasion and the the plus two yeah. plus two is what it's yeah. about so we do this we do the thing i think we pass the turn maybe like a commander comes after us and we go exile um sure because we need to get rid of it that might open us open us up here um yeah, and we gain life from exile so we trigger. scry the land which um yeah i think we, do we do still we... need a land um, I kind of like it. Um, we don't really need. I I'd love it if it were untapped right now. Um, yeah. So maybe we should have been bottoming these for something else. Islan says, "Well, let's uh, gonna go get some dinner." Hey, have a good one, Islan. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, bud. take care. Yep. Um, let's 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 uh, let's bin it and see what we get. Or sorry, um, mm -hmm. bottom. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, bottom. All right. Um, oh, are we running two copies of Marshalling Cry? Huh. Interesting. We'll have to look at that. Interesting. Um, okay, so we've got an untapped plan. That's better. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, actually, this is like kind of crazy, right? We go. 
it's a lot so of triggers here. I, the only thing is I'd like to be able to hold up mana for protection. So I think we go Celestial Unicorn. Uh, we're mm-hmm. going to get a trigger here first, which is going to ETB, gain us, a, uh, gain us a life. And there's yep. going to be this and this are going to trigger. So let's um, right. scry first. Uh, actually, no, we, sorry. Um, we're not scrying first. We're putting the counters on this first. Um, and then we are uh, adding a counter and scrying. And cut short seems like exactly the kind of card we want right now because people it's are good. terrified it's of us, right? For sure. Um, so we yeah, having that. the creatures to convoke it's a big deal, right? And then like by this point, honestly, somebody like one or two people are dead. Like yeah. this thing is not killable because again, like without protection, without like Shomana's blessing or trample, it still is the abyss. <laughs> I mean, you can't block this thing forever. No, it's huge. Yep, and this is already like it's ten ten because of healer's mm-hmm. hawk. Um, and then like, we probably have to spend some mana with the, uh, you know, obsidian acolyte next turn comes around. We go, um, battle, sc- uh, battle screech, yeah. which is going to end the game. <laughs> this is, yeah. It gives this, us two triggers. Yeah. Or it's going to be four two triggers. Two right? unicorns. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to oh, go. Yeah. If we, yeah. Especially if we flash it back. So one, two, and that's going to be two triggers here, um, which is going to go, uh, life gain, life gain. We're going to do. Uh, the the unicorn first. Uh, we might have to protect it. We'll, we'll, I think we, we might have to protect it. And then we're going to scry um, once. We're going to bottom that. We don't need that anymore. And we're going to scry. That's really good. We're going to keep That's that. That's going to end the game. Yeah, yeah for sure. And then we're going to go uh, one, two, one, two. And then we're going to take our um, obsidian acolyte, our social climber, and one burb. Um, we're going to token copy here um so we've got one like that but you have to tap a white creature to flash yep. it back okay. one two okay. three um the social climbers oh, green creature. three white creatures yep that's right yep. so it's got to be uh both of those and then we're yep. going to make two more birds which is going to go one two one two one two one two a uh, scry uh oh we, we actually we'll don't we we're just scrying one yeah we just want to leave it on top yep and then in fact what i might even do is like wait to flash it back oh until uh, until next turn yep yep or or no like next turn so that like you know we because we don't need to scry anymore this turn we don't need to i mean if we want to if we need the birds for something then we cast it anyway but if we're in a position where we can like hold on to it to like save those scries then we should holy shit this is a 15 15 this is a 9 8 um we're gonna yeah like you see exactly what i mean like you you can get whatever you want yeah off the top of your deck um oh finhorn brownie mentioned flaming fist whoa oh sure yeah. <laughs> That's cool. uh yeah yeah no no finn you are absolutely right um you're right marshall and cry does have two copies thank you very much aria uh Perfect. which now is room for a flaming uh, yeah this is this is the card that that ends ends people um yeah uh this is gonna go under i don't know something it's just gonna hang out um so this is really sweet. And, you know, this actually came together pretty quick because you and I have a pretty good sense of like what these decks look like and needing to have mm-hmm. a certain number. They're, they're aggressive. They don't have a huge amount of draw in terms of like raw volume, right. but you have like, yeah, like 12 draw spells. And um, and then all those are attached to some enormous number of card filtering triggers. Like the fact that yeah. we got to 1414 tells you the whole story. That was 12 scries. 12 yeah. scries. Um, we played a ton of turns. We played a bunch of turns there, and not once did we draw land when we did not want Yep, land. and not once were we overextended. That's the other thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is definitely very spicy. Um, I think we are going to um, start to wrap things up here and, yeah. and finish things up. I do want to thank each and every one of you who came and joined us for this live stream today. I was uh, talking yeah. to my physical therapist today, actually, about just how fun it is for me to to co-create decks with you in chat and with, you know, with this great co-host, you guys get access to Derek and I, and, and it just feels like a very reciprocal experience where you all are like co-creating this community resource with each other, you know? And, and once we have these out in the world, then people start to do interesting things with them. Like for example, Find uh, tagged me in the discord talking about how um, a great desert prospector a deck that we built together as well had had some really interesting innovations and new adaptations to it to make it very aggressive and that the deck has been winning quite a lot. I think it might be the number one winning um, mono white deck probably, right now. Yeah, probably the best mono white deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and in competitive. Um, and so you know, uh, like like just providing that foundation for 
people to do this is really satisfying to me. But the fact is, it's like, it's not just us. It's like, it's you and chat, right? You all are yeah. providing recommendations like Fame, Flaming Fist. We missed it. You found it. And it's great in the deck. And so, um, yeah, just want to express just a moment of gratitude for you all who um, yeah. who who, uh, who do that. And I also want to thank the people who really um, do a lot to make this happen as well, which is our patrons. So I'm going to give them another shout out today because I'm feeling just extra grateful. And that's Zach, Scooby, Chris, Tristan, William, Paul, Corey, Derek, Devin, Ian, Bobby, Gin Shooting Star, and of course, Noyark. Thank you all for your financial contributions. If you all are interested in supporting the channel financially as well, this is a, a brief look at our tiers here. We have a $2 a month all the way up to our Epicure level at 50 bucks a month. Uh, probably our highest value um, uh, uh, like levels here are two and this $10 a month one here. Um, this one does include the member shout outs. You're gonna get early video access. You're gonna get to vote on the Let's Builds, which we'll be doing twice a week. For those of you that didn't know, we're back to Monday and Friday, which is fucking awesome. Double the trouble. We got too many commanders to make. I'm just straight up like-, like this, I know. We don't have enough people playing this format right now to get it all done. And so I'm going to try and do my small part to do that. The other thing is that you see these interfaces that I'm using here. Let me give you a good example of it. Like this one right here, not to take Derek's face off the screen, but, um, but like this right here, you will get this interface at $10 a month with your name, your link to your Mox field and your Twitter. And these interfaces, if you want to buy these off of owned.com, GG. These are fifty to hundred dollars for uh, for a package, and if you want to um, get access to these, this is a great way to do that. So um, this is a this, this is a good value. So, anyways, without hawking this too much more, I do want to just express enormous gratitude, Derek, for showing up once again, and uh, yeah. and man, just like enriching the format again with this really cool blend of like you know, building these aggressive decks that have this really interesting avenue of operation. And look, they work. These are not yeah. memes. These are very lethal yeah, it's decks. Real stuff. Um, you can take these to tournaments. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so yeah, I just appreciate all your contributions, man. Yeah, man. I, I, you know, I'm always happy to come on. I, I love talking shop with people who, you know, are kind of on the same, same wavelength. I think, you know, you and I have a great commission oh, yeah. for this sort of thing. So yeah, you know, it's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll, 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 I'll find, I'll find our next project. Don't you, don't you worry. You know, honestly, it might just need to be 10th district legionnaire. Um, like it's the same I like, thing. I like heroic gross. text. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily like, like, is it like, what's better about, like, what's better about that over, for example, Illuminator Virtuoso? So yeah, I'll give you a little. I'll give you a little. A little hint about heroic decks and why I think people um, are not great at conceptualizing them. So when your commander is a heroic creature like tenth district, tenth district legionnaire or battlewise hoplite, that is always almost always going to be the best thing to be targeting. So you almost don't really want to include other heroic creatures because they're always going to be worse than the one that you are targeting. Well, that's your commander almost always. Um, so you back yourself into these really weird like tensions where you have all these cool spells, all these cool heroic creatures. And you just never end up tar targeting them with anything because it's always best to target your commander. Um, so uh, if you are going to play a deck like this, uh, 10th District or Battlewise Hoplite, uh, ease up on the heroic creatures and don't lean into them. Yeah, I yeah. Think people do that a lot. I really like the idea of this being like a brawling deck that is yeah. going to have um, like a lot of life gain in it. So it's going to be highly yep. aggressive. Um, and this one's great because because Red's got a lot similar, of really huh? pump spells. I, I love pump spells in Red. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, they are oh, super good. You mean like, uh, like like this one? Yeah. Or like, um, <laughs> oh oh, friend of oh. the show, reckless charge. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. No. Like. Yeah. So. <laughs> um. So just kill people. Yeah. Just just, just just kill them. Um. And and I think what we get here over over the um over the illuminator virtuoso is that mm -hmm. um is that we're by gaining access to another color. We may gain, we're going to gain the double strike, but you, you don't get the double strike. So is this like, is this just worse, Illuminator Virtuoso? Um, because Illuminator Virtuoso just has Connive and Heroic. So it's Connive Heroic as opposed to Scry Heroic. It's and more it's, linear. Well, it's not always because if you discard a land, you don't get it. Um, right, and a but lot you of also times, have you, double strike. I think you're incentivized. That's true, but I think a lot of times you're incentivized to discard mm -hmm. lands with those effects, particularly because like... The, the mm -hmm. evasion spells or protection spells are, are at such a premium for a card like that, like such a linear commander. Um, so I think that in some cases you might run into that. I think it's a non-zero percent of the time. I think 10th District, you have two colors. So like there's a lot of really great red spells you can just punk people out with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's a little more, I think, um, unpredictable in the sense that like if you look at the white suite of cards that go along with Illuminator Virtuoso, like 
all they all just give it the only form of evasion you really get is flying right so like you can plan for that um this you have access to like uh, trample you yeah, can do yeah. you, you can, do, you, you, can still do the, you can still do the flying stuff um you i mean you still you still have access to the double strike stuff but it's not as telegraphed so people might not like consider you to be a huge yeah. threat until you actually go off with it um you get to you get to do the great thing in commander which is being the second most threatening thing on the board um which yeah. is the best place to be right there's a combo and player I think this card, and there's you um, yeah, I think the, I think cards like this do that quite well, um, where they don't immediately telegraph how threatening they are until you're dead to it. What, um, what's and Luminator so, Virtuoso so is much more heads up. Yeah, and just so you, so you guys, um, I mean, the thing is, I don't even know that I trade that treat them as different though, because like you're in red, you have double strike spells, you can just kill mm -hmm. people out of nowhere, and so yeah. like Luminator Virtuoso, um, and uh, yeah, I I don't know. Like this is all, and the, like you don't have any color problems in this deck either, which is pretty sick. True. Um, and the other thing that Illuminator Virtuoso has that this doesn't is that Illuminator Virtuoso surprisingly has a ton of ramp, and that's because what you do is you swap lands for mana rocks, and then the that means that more of your so you were talking about you don't want to bin you don't want to bin lands, but you kind of so, do, and what it's actually doing is you just turn them into rocks as you bin rocks. The issue there though is that you're not ramping if you aren't playing if you're making your land drops. Right, but your first couple plays are usually like a mana rock, and then when you play a limited mm -hmm. virtual, so you have a mana up. Um, and this is like a very lethal deck already. So I don't know what. So what's right. the? I mean, I guess what what I what I mean though is that like even that play pattern like. You still need to hit your land drops to cast your mana rock to have mana up. Like you still need to be playing your lands. Like you can't just like cut lands from mana rocks in a situation like that. Um, and that's the reason why. And I know I've talked to you about this. That's why mm. Sylvan Ranger is a good card because it gives you your land to make your land drops so that you can ramp with your ramp spells. Right. Um, oh, here's but, another uh, one. It's not as intuitive. It's the same card except it's white blue, which I actually like this combination a lot better. I just like the blue cards better in general. They're a lot more tempo, a lot more tempo oriented. Yeah, which I think you know, that's a card like this. Stuff. Yeah. No. So and plus I and. I, I wanna... uh, let me let me let me give you the name of a card, and I want yeah. you to look it up on the yeah. internet right now. That's really good with this. Is um, Serpentine Ambush? Yeah. Okay, I know this one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or, or or the whole suite of these cards. Yeah, the all ones of that make these. the base. There's a lot of ones that make it base four four. A lot of flying. them the draw the draw yeah. too. Um, there's the new mm -hmm. um, suit up, um, which I think yep. is just a really cool. I think I, is a suite or is a suit up. Um, I want to respond yeah, to Aria. Yeah. You had a b bunch of questions here or comments. Um, answered prayers or vines of Vastwood for Spirit Link? Uh, no, no, I don't think Spirit Link's going to make it mm -hmm. in the deck. We just have so much life gain already. The thing we didn't track really in that outside of Armadillo Cook, like we didn't track in that last game, but we gained probably like, uh, like probably twenty five life. So I think we're we're probably fine there. Um, next viewer game, that's pretty, basically whatever I can play. Um, so we'll see, maybe something this weekend. Um, so mm -hmm. in the in future, just generally expecting Monday, Friday, and then some game over the weekend, probably. Um, if the commander damage wasn't a thing, I think that would not be the case. Yep. Um, I think the Azorius one is strong. I think you're right. The Azorius one might be the better one here. Um, yeah. And then Arya saying having access to blue is really strong. Red does a lot more damage in a shorter amount of time with stuff like attack pumps and double strike. Also, um, red has cards like um, the me uh, plus three plus O and menace. Uh, which is like a huge beating. So you do accelerate the damage more rapidly, except yep. that white, you do have access to, I think, yeah, red is more aggressive in that case, but the blue is going to be a bit more um, like unblockability type stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't think in a deck like that, like that you want to kill people. I don't think you need to kill people as fast as oh, possible. I think you need to set, set up your kills. In blue, you, you do get, um, in blue, you do get some pretty cool stuff. You get um, hands of binding and you get the, yep. um, the uh what are they uh, called again um uh, the cypher spell the cypher yeah the cypher yep. and and cypher i will have you all know cypher casts itself so yep. casting cast, it and you yep. can target your commander hidden hidden oh. strings is the other one it's like a ramp oh. spell too hidden strings yeah. does it twice so that's actually yeah, pretty it, sick. It, it ta tap and taps two things. Yeah, it's like vigilance, but it's like buffing you up multiple times. Arya says mono color general is kind of weak IMO. If your general strategy is contained and self contained in the same color, then your deck is hurt by not. I don't think that's the case. Not Illum necessarily. Illum Illuminator yeah. Virtuoso, I have died on turn three and turn four too, and you cannot do that in those other colors. Um, so it's it's very linear, but it's it's tremendously focused. That's it's what, super that's, focused. That's the benefit. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, Illuminator Virtu. In general, I think Illuminator Virtuoso is better than these, and I don't say that just from a hypo hypothetical standpoint. I've sure. played against it a lot, and it's fucking lethal. It's so scary, and um, mm -hmm. and it does so with protection. I died on, and when I died on turn three, 
I they did it through interaction. And when I died on turn four, they did it through three pieces of interaction. Okay, it was like absolutely yeah. <laughs> insane um, to like die that way. So I think that um, like maybe you play the other color for different reasons. Um, maybe you just want a little more interaction with the red or with the blue. Maybe you want yeah. a little more aggression with the red. But I, I think that Illuminator Virtuoso is very straightforward. Um, it doesn't play any removal mm -hmm. though. So you're definitely like, you know, <laughs> Um, yeah. That is that is kind of the, the name of the game. Whereas the red and blue one, you can play counter spells or or burn. So, uh, no, uh, we've actually gone a little bit longer than I was anticipating here. But it was fun chatting with you yeah. all and like going through some of the ideas and stuff. So, but I think yeah, we do need sure. to do need to wrap it up. Um, yep. Yeah. With that, dude, Derek, thank you very much once again. It was great having you. Dude. Yeah, man, my pleasure. My yeah. pleasure. Yeah, good stuff. All right, well, Connoisseurs of Fine Common Cardboard, thank you so much for joining us today. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, comment below if you have any feedback for us. Join the Patreon if you want to support us financially and get access to all those great benefits. And I hope to see you on the battlefield. We'll catch you on the flip. Peace. Yeah. Bye, everybody.